Hello everybody, this is Ten, and I am going to be running you through a tutorial on how to speedrun Final Fantasy Mystic Quest Any Percent. Uh, now I've got all the information I need to make an updated version to the most optimal route. Uh, we'll still be treating this as a beginner guide, just in case I take the other video down. So we will start from the beginning. Uh, just a couple core mechanics I want to go over. Uh, first of all, you got weapon switching. L and R buttons control what weapons you have. And each weapon has their own overworld ability and their uh, in-battle ability. Which, I don't have all of the weapons at this point. And this is a live tutorial, so please uh, ignore the dog sounds you'll hear in the background. So now we've got sword, axe, claw, and bomb. In the overworld, the bomb is a bomb. Makes a lot of sense. The sword we'll be using to poke some statues and some faces later. Uh, the axe will cut down small trees and mushrooms. And the claw allows you to climb up walls, certain walls. All right, so obviously switching weapons takes time. You cannot switch while you're moving, as you see here. So you wanna try to take advantage as much downtime that you have. So after every battle, the enemy sprite stays on screen for just a moment. And during those few frames, you actually can switch your item up to twice, I believe, if you're fast enough. So I'll just show you. So now as the enemy leaves, you can switch before you can even start moving again. So it's kind of complicated to explain without you actually figuring it out yourself, but you'll get, you'll get your own timing down, and it won't be that hard once you get used to it. Uh, what else here? So there's two different kinds of text boxes. Some that are, I would call, battle text, and some are just conversation text. Conversation text boxes we can only clear by mashing A and B. So whenever you're in a conversation, you're just going to be A, B, mashing. Whenever you're in a battle, the D-pad also... Uh, allows you to mash. So optimally, you're going to be rotating the D-pad and smashing A and B at the same time to get through battle text. And I'll also demonstrate that. The only thing about using the D-pad is knowing when to stop mashing. In a multi-turn battle, if you no, so if you come up to the last attack of the of the turn, you're gonna want to stop mashing as soon as you know the last text box is done, or else you're going to overmash and either run away or use an item or do something you don't want to do. So at the very beginning, when you start learning how to run this game, just be careful, uh, mash slowly, or just don't even D-pad mash, just A-B mash, and kind of figure it out from there. Uh, there are two forms of movement here. You can jump, as you see me do a couple times, or you can just walk. Jumping is technically one frame slower than walking, so if you really want to save frames, then only jump when you absolutely have to. Um, let's see. Screen transitions are kind of finicky here. As you go through most, not all, screen transitions, you see if I just hold the direction, it does not allow me to walk. Now, there are some where you can do that, but a lot of them you can't. So, the way you kind of get over that is the game is looking for a fresh input, essentially. So you can either go through a transition mashing the direction you want to go. You can kind of just try to frame perfectly input as soon as the screen loads in. Or you can do what I call LR mashing. And if you hold your direction and mash L and R at the same time, you already know you won't switch weapons. And it allows the game to recognize your D-pad input. And that, for me, is the fastest way to get moving. So whatever you decide to do, just practice it the entire time. I'm not exactly sure which transitions don't require fresh input but it's not very many so I just urge you to to always LR mash or d-pad mash or whatever you feel comfortable with um, so in battle you can also so you, obviously you have the text boxes that come up after you pick your attacks but you also have your actual menu in. so coming in fresh you can hold the a button down and the entire battle text will scroll through, or sorry, the, the decisions you make will automatically happen as fast as possible uh, based on where your cursor was last. So if I go into this battle holding A, well, 
It would have done that if I had a thunderstorm. But you see how that kind of automatically just blew through. Alternatively, if you go through, you can mash. Obviously. But if you're not crazy at mashing or don't want to mash the entire time, get used to holding A. And the last thing I want to show you before we kind of get started here is your partner's uh, actions. So if look at look at Phoebe and how it says manual above the bow. I can switch that from manual to auto. And what that means in this game is they're going to hold your hand. In a battle, your partner, if on auto, will focus on you no matter what. If your health is 50% or lower, or if you have any status ailment or you're dead, your partner will drop whatever they're doing to try to heal you if they can. Uh, that's actually really important to, to keep in mind. And there are quite a few spots in this game where you need to not be on auto specifically or else it'll kind of screw up your inventory or you have to be on auto so it will take things out of your inventory kind of it's kind of confusing i'll explain it as we go just know that there are a lot of different battles you're gonna have to switch for and just like uh switching your weapon you can also switch your manual and auto during the downtime after a battle which i'll show real quick this won't be a quick fight though So now watch after this, we'll have a couple frames of downtime, and if I time it right, which I did not, <laughs> which is great, you can uh, switch from auto to mount. You'll just have to believe me, you'll see it a lot through the run. All right, so let's get started. And unfortunately, to actually start this game, you need to have a file that is near the end of the game. You need any saved file on your cart or emulator that is uh, that has Phoebe as your partner character, but the second version, which you'll understand later. So basically an end game, uh, Phoebe. So if you look at your statuses here, you see how she's resistant to so many things. It's the bottom right, uh, like the chat bubble, disease, the arrow, the sun, etc. And what happens if we soft reset on console, just do like the reset switch or whatever. And on here we can just kind of do one of these. That will actually allow the game to keep those resistances in mind for some reason and will uh, load them onto every single partner we have throughout the game. So from there, you're going to start a new file. You can name yourself whatever you want. All the text is relatively instant, so it doesn't actually save you any time to do like one character like most games, which is odd. So what we're going to do is we're going to start her up. It's obviously going to be slow. And uh, let's go. This is the first battle of the game, first boss, you could say. It's actually killed many runs. This is the Behemoth. And you're gonna mash through A, B. Make sure you're at least mashing B right here because you have to jump over that. And the Behemoth is uh, kind of a bitch. It's completely RNG whether or not you want to continue a run or not. It is 100 HP, you do 25 damage per attack. And for a critical hit, you do 75. So obviously the fastest way to get through this is a 25 attack and a 75 attack. Um, if you're just starting out, I would just take anything it gives you. Me personally, I'm, I'm grinding out for the best run I can, so I'm pretty much resetting until I get two turns or three turns. Uh, two turn takes 14 seconds and leaves you with a lot of health, and that is the most important part for a serious run. If you want to uh, reduce the amount of menus you do, then you're gonna wanna leave this battle with as much health as possible. So, uh, like I said, two turn leaves you with 28. A four turn, which is just four straight hits, is actually 23 seconds and leaves you with 16 health, which is only, uh, you can only survive one hit in the next section. So, again, if you're just starting off, don't worry about it too much, but you'll be resetting a lot. If you do need to reset here, if you do another soft reset, the resistance glitch will still be in effect. So don't, ha don't worry about reloading your old file and coming back here. So, we got a miss, so this will be a 5 turn if we hit this. That took 27 seconds and left us with 10 health. That's pretty not ideal. Again, if it's your first few runs, don't worry about it. You're not going to be uh, speeding through this game regardless. Uh, 
Uh, again, just as a reminder, my name's Ten. Uh, I've been running this game for quite a while now. Not as long as a bunch of other people, but there's not really a tutorial out besides the El Magus Game Facts thing that's been out for ages. And this is a new route called the Venus Shield route. I had a video on it that apparently was not optimal, but now I've got the information I needed to make an optimal tutorial. So this is going to be covering just the Venus Shield route. And uh, thank you to Claude, who uh, kind of founded this route, if you want to say it that way. All right, let's go. So we're going to head up here, go to the right. We're going to jump over this Santa Claus guy and push this rock forward once. Don't jump over the rock or else you kind of screw yourself over. Head out to the right. Uh, let's go over overworld movement real quick. So just, I was going to say just like in battle, but no. You can uh, move in the overworld by just tapping the D-pad in the direction you want to go. That's obviously on a rail, so you can't go where you want to most of the time. But you can actually move move optimally by buffering your input. So as I head to the to the left here, I'm going to hold the right on uh, the right button on the D-pad, and it's going to move me to the city again as fast as it possibly can. So it just inputs like on the first frame possible, and you're going to be using that to move wherever you can. And also, the same goes for the A button. So if I'm, I'm going to push right here and then hold the A button, and it's going to allow me to enter the city as fast as possible. Again, we're going to, we would be LR buffering, buffering to enter the city. We would come up here, LR buffer again, and we're going to talk to this green lady whose name is Kaylee. She will be our first real partner of the man, of our first partner of the run. Again, these are just conversation text, so A, B, match. We're going to head out this way. LR match to the right. Uh, you can take any path you want in any part of the game as long as it's the same amount of steps because there's no like turn frames like in Pokemon or anything like that. So as long as it takes you the same amount of steps, you can zigzag, you can do whatever the hell you want. Um, when you're opening chests, there are a couple ways you can do it. You can mash the A button, but as you can see, if you overmash even a little bit, it just makes you check the empty chest. The way I like to do it is try to like frame perfectly clear the you obtained this item box with A. And if you do it too early, that kind of screws you up, but just do it as best you can, whatever's comfortable for you. We're gonna head out this way, LR mash. Again, I'm gonna avoid the middle, just because uh, if those guys get in your way, you either have to jump or move out of the way, which I don't like to do. We'll come over here, hold the A button, LR mash into this cutscene. A, B, mash these text boxes away. All right, so you're gonna wanna be on auto going into this battle. Let me just go ahead and screw this up again. All right, LR up into this cutscene. You want to be on auto heading into this battle and just hold A as you enter the battle. If you just press A right here, you see how there's like a pause. You don't want that. If you hold A from going into the battle as the screen transitions, it'll automatically start you off. Now you're going to be D-pad mashing, AB mashing. And here's where the, the most important stuff is, or the most complicated stuff is. Which we can't show you because we died. So, if you are just learning this game and it's your first couple runs, you can either use Cure to heal yourself. You can use Kaylee's Life to heal yourself. Uh, and then while you're in the menu, you might as well go to the Customize menu. Switch to figure if you're more comfortable with numbers. Switch your message speeds to fast. And 100% uh, you have to switch your window color to pink or else it's an invalid run. So I am not going to do that because theoretically we would not be there. Uh, because we're doing high level runs too. So come in, hold A. This is why you don't want a long behemoth fight. Because oops, okay. that's what happens when you overmatch. So we got a critical hit, that's pretty lucky. Kaylee miss, which really sucks, we're gonna die. So again, if I'm on auto, she's gonna prioritize my life. So she'd heal. However, we don't want that because it's slow. So let's have, man. we have to switch to manual and manually attack each of these enemies. And if she's gonna keep missing, then we would just reset. Again, holding A after you know the last text box is done. And you see there, the enemy was still out and I switched to auto. That's kind of the timing I was talking about and you can't really get a feel for it unless you play yourself. 
Uh, so we do want to switch to auto after that. Go into this battle holding A. We're not going to heal because theoretically we can get through this battle with one HP. Holy cow, she has missed a lot. Okay, when I said we could get through the battle, I meant we definitely cannot get through the battle. Again, at this point, I would probably reset. This has been terrible so far. However, just switch yourself to manual and try to get through this fight. Kind of count the number of attacks. So we know that Kaylee's going to attack, and then there's going to be one more enemy. And as soon as that text box is gone, I'll hold A. Oh, my goodness. Again, hold A. All right, so we want to stay on manual, so we're not going to switch off of that. We'll come up to this tree and talk to it. Mash through these with A and B. All right, so... You want to ideally go into this battle holding A, but you have to get your timing down, because you only want your three inputs on Benjamin to go through. So you want one, two, three, and then you're going to want to go spell, Click left to scroll over to life. A, up, A. This will one hit kill this boss. And there's no other fast way to do that. So just, you'll eventually get fast at that little input. So don't worry about it too much. We're gonna AB mash through here. Kaylee is basically dead. Gives us the ax. We'll revive her later. She's not actually dead, but we'll give her a potion. Uh, hold up through both of these places to get to the sand temple where we meet our second partner. You can mash A through this t chest because there's a cutscene right after. And again, we'll be AB mashing. Since I didn't mention it before, well, actually, during these cutscenes where you have a party member join, you can switch from auto to manual. So we're gonna switch to auto right there at Tristam. Uh, since I didn't mention it before, the fastest version of this game is actually the NTSC, the uh, English version. So uh, it's got the, the most glitches that we utilize in this. And the text actually isn't faster in Japanese, or it isn't fast enough to warrant playing the Japanese. All right, so we have quicksand movement here. There's two ver uh, two points of the game that'll have quicksand, this dungeon and the very last dungeon. If you just walk into it, it makes you go rather slow. However, you can walk into it and hold the direction in which it's flowing, and it will like triple your speed, as you can see. So every time you see uh, quicksand where it's going where you want to go, just kind of hold that direction. So we're going to hold up here and then hold B. We can't jump on the quicksand, so it'll just make us jump as soon as we get over that. Uh, just a reminder, this is a routed speed run, so please do not pick up any items that I do not go through on this, or else it will screw up some of the glitches. Come over here, hold B to jump. Don't worry about mashing B, you can just hold it, jump as long as you want. Again, the route here that you take doesn't matter as long as it's the same amount of steps. That's just the way I like to do it. Go through this little rip cage tunnel and up to this door right here. Looks like the Zelda, like a bombable door. So, AB mash the first few text boxes, but as soon as the bomb comes out, start only mashing A because you can actually say no to buying the bombs and it'll just add extra text boxes. We're gonna switch to the X. As you go through a screen transition, you have kind of like a, it's almost like a, an enemy. Like when you kill an enemy, you have a, just a little bit of time you can do that. So uh, it doesn't matter if you hit it or not, really, until you start getting uh, refined runs down. We're going to come up to this uh, worm, or the left worm. It doesn't matter. As long as Tristan's on auto, just hold A. And we're going to switch back to bombs. Ideally, you do that after that fight, like during the downtime. That's going to be one of the two fights we use Axe on. Uh, in this entire dungeon, after the worm fight, you want to run away from any formation that has three enemies. The worms you can kill pretty quickly if you're on Axe and uh, you have Tristam attack. But otherwise, you want to run away from every three. It is faster to run and get a good formation than it is to try to get through a three. All right, come around this way. Again, we're going to LR mash out over here. Hug the walls, moving as optimally as you can. Again, holding A, and then mashing your D-pad in AB. Come up here, use a bomb. Uh, the root cage. We can walk through the uh, side of this skull here. Make sure you don't walk into the, the quicksand. If you really want to, you can kind of do a zigzag movement here. Just to make sure you're going to be on target. So we're going to switch to manual. We're going to have Benjamin bomb. 
and we're gonna have Tristram attack the what is called a Gorgon. This is because the Gorgon is the more dangerous of the enemies that can come out in this formation. And if Tristram uh, if Tristram attacks the other enemy first, then the Gorgon has a chance to confuse you, and that will kind of just ruin the fight. Uh, if you have a single Gorgon, just feel free to stay on auto. Tristan will kill it one hit. If he misses, then you're kind of just SOL. So again, we're gonna do this. Heal crit, of course, heal crit. Only goes easy. All right, and we'll get back to auto for the next battle. Now, if you do notice a difference, there was a voice crack, but if you notice a difference, the enemies in this dungeon actually disappear far quicker than they do in any other place in the game. So you can almost switch weapons immediately after the battles, like the transition. I clicked that the second that the screen was up and it let me switch. That's a, a unique thing for Bone Dungeon and you'll understand once you start playing and get a feel for it. Uh, all right, so we have a two here. This fight has three formations it can be. It can be this two, it can be a single Minotaur, which is the green guy. And it can be a three. Again, if it's a three, run away. However, there are three different options we have for this fight here. Uh, we'll start with the what Al Magus has on his guy there. So you'd switch Tristam to Manual. You'd attack with the bomb, and then you would defend Benjamin with Tristam. This allows you to, to one-hit kill this guy with virtually zero uh, risk. The only problem is there's about a 50-50 chance that the Minotaur gets a confusion off. But he always confuses Tristram, so here we go. Confuses Tristram, doesn't matter, you're still gonna kill him. So in terms of speed of animations, the actual fastest way to do this is to have Tristram attack, leave him on auto, and if he gets a critical hit, he kills it in one hit. If he doesn't crit, what's unique about his weapon is that it will in try to inflict every status ailment it can to the enemy. So it'll actually paralyze him, allow us to hit, and that's actually faster than letting the confusion um, animation play. If you really, really want to go fast, uh, switch to Axe here. And if he doesn't crit, your Axe is the like the fastest animation you have for your weapons. Because the bomb is pretty long. The only problem with that is the Axe has a relatively high miss chance. So play that one however you want to. Um, if, oh, if you get a double, you're going to want Tristan to, uh, to attack the Minotaur. I should probably not do that. You're going to want to manually attack the Minotaur with Tristan. Again, that'll paralyze him. And the bomb will kill both at once. And this will allow you to have only one fade out animation instead of two. It does save you a little bit of time. So our goal in the next few fights is to get to level four. You do have a very small chance of getting level three on the boss for this dungeon, and it's pretty much game over at that point. It's very difficult to advance. So there's nothing you can do about it either, unless you really wanted to waste time to fight another fight or run away for a better, uh, more formations. So we're gonna go straight up here, bomb this little skull here, walk straight up. This is where we're gonna pick up our first item. These are seeds, and what these do is replenish your magic charges. And uh, if you didn't know already, Mystic Quest is very odd in the sense that it has numbers instead of NP. So you can see here, this is our white spells section. We have three spells, so we can cast white three times before we have to replenish our spells. Uh, one spell charge for this and zero for this. Um, it's kind of a weird thing, and there's going to be... A learning curve for like trying to figure out where you're at and how many you have left however I will link a an Android application in the description and what it is is it's called like a tally marker or something and what I did when I started playing was I'd, I'd have a tally for thunders I'd have a tally for seeds um, and what that let me do was keep track of exactly how many I was using and how many I had left before I had to use the seed to replenish my seed uh, my spells so now that we have the seeds, we have a relatively important thing we can do. And uh, we call that seed duplicating. You can actually duplicate any item in the game, any consumable in the game. But the only one that's useful for us is the seeds. And the deal is, it's you have to run away from a fight. However, it doesn't make sense to run away from a good formation. So as you're going through after the seeds, if you get a three formation on any of these fights, 
you're going to want to use um, that opportunity to duplicate a seed. And I'm going to show you how to do that as soon as I get a bad formation. Maybe not. I suppose I can just show you here. All right, so you want to make sure that your partner's on manual, because if you go through and use an item or set up an attack on your and your partner's on auto, it will just automatically play through the attack. So what you want to do is, when your partner's on manual, come through, use an item, use the seed, and then back up all the way and run away. So what that does is it makes the game think, it kind of cues up the seed in the battle, and then when you run away, it uh, tells the game, oh, you didn't use the seed, let me give it back to you. However, you never used the seed in the first place, so it just gives you an extra seed. Throughout the run, we are gonna uh, looking to duplicate four seeds total. And I will try to tell you exactly where the good times are for that. So obviously, this is a bad formation. Again, we're going to duplicate a seed. So we're at, already at two. If I was using my tally thing, we'd be at... Actually, I'll just use it anyways. We are at two seeds. And the thunders are irrelevant right now because we're not at that part. Uh, we're going to... Remember, our curses are memory. So we're still on item. If we just mash through our whole day, we're just going to be using a seed. And that not only wastes a seed, but wastes... An entire duplication we did, so that's just time wasted. Switch back to attack, manually have Tristan attack the uh, Minotaur. Gonna mash through. And at this point, we're gonna go up to the edge of the quicksand, click B to jump, and then hold left to kind of skip that fight there. Bomb that. We're gonna head right here. Again, we can hold A, but make sure you stop when you get to Tristan because you want Tristan to do something else. All right, and you've officially made it through your first dungeon and gotten to the first boss. At this, After that fight, you can pause and menu whenever you'd like. I like to menu here, just it's personal preference. So there are two ways you can do this. Um, the way that I like to do it and the way that is generally accepted is faster. So you're going to want to spell if you're doing it the fast way. Let me just make a 60 here. You wanna come down, spell. Cure yourself until you're full. Come up here, use an item, use a seed on Benjamin. You see now we have six white spells, three and one, but we just care about the white spells. Go up two more, go to customize, and this is where you would do your menuing if you did not have to do it in the beginning. Again, pink is very important for the uh, window player. And then you just back out all the way and start your fight. The way I like to do it is kind of odd, so I like to do this, life, no seed, and there we go. I'm gonna go through the, the way I do it just because I'm comfortable with that, but I will explain obviously what you're supposed to do. So to start this fight, you're going to want uh, Benjamin to use Cure, because Flamorous is weak to Cure, and Cure is actually our strongest attack right now. So we're going to uh, get Cure up here, just like we did with Life in, on the first boss. Use it on uh, Flamorous Rex, and have Tristam on auto. The luckiest thing you can do here is have Tristam get a bunch of critical hits, and have the boss pretty much only attack Tristam. From there, we just hold A, keeping an eye on our HP. Because remember, as soon as as soon as we're dead, Tristan will heal us, and then we ob obviously are also dead. We don't want that. So we're gonna kind of keep track. We're having really good luck right now. Once Tristan gets down to around 100 HP, we're gonna consider healing him. Uh, if he dies, the we're pretty much screwed because every attack that Flamers does is gonna kill us in one hit, for the most part. Uh, any area of effect attack, I should say. If it's a attack all kind of thing, it'll split up between all the alive enemies or all the alive party members. So if Tristan's dead, we take the full force and we die. Um, so here we're gonna switch to uh, manual. If you're using my strategy, I'm out of cures already. So I switch to bomb. And we're gonna come over here, use life on Tristan with Tristan. Just to be safe, you can be risky uh, once you get used to the game, but you can see that we would have left with what, 12 HP? And now we can switch him back to auto and he'll keep attacking. And at this point, we're so close to done, you can either choose to play it safe and heal yourself uh, with Tristam, or you can just try to get through it. See, now that's gonna kill us. And again, make a decision. Uh, we're probably close enough that this will kill. Shows how much I know. This one will kill, theoretically. Aha! That's why I don't take risks. If you die and you want to reset, then reset. If you don't care, then just say you don't give up. And we'll run it back. You will die to this boss a lot. 
And it just is what it is. He has 2200 HP. So if you really want to do the math, you can do the math. There's two kind of like mindsets for this. You can either play super safe and heal Benjamin as soon as he takes an attack like that. Or you can just let Benjamin die and revive him. Um, as you can see, the, we just missed a cure. We have about a 10% chance to miss all white spells. That's the reason that I don't do a seed and I let myself only use three whites and then use bombs. It's 60, just under 60 attack less or damage less. But for me, it's worth it. It's 100% accurate. I forgot to mention that. Bombs are 100% accurate, even if you're blinded. So we have good luck on that first run through. And then, of course, now we're getting bad luck. He doesn't usually use that Rip Earth a ton until he's low health. That's kind of how he's programmed. He can still use it, like, first turn, which is really unfortunate. But you can see as he's getting lower, he's using it more and more. See, that's what we need right there. So now we're both kind of low. It would be smart to heal at least one of us. But I like to play risky. Well, I was done with me. And just for the sake of the tutorial here, I'm going to actually heal myself up. Jeez, a beat. Pretty unfortunate. Holy cow. And uh, speed is kind of like a suggestion in this game. Oh, we are in trouble. As you can see, a lot of the time we're faster than him, but sometimes he just feels like he's faster than us. It kind of just is hit and miss and whatever it feels like. Oops. We're gonna cheers. So I guess while we're running through this again, we will, I can just mention how all of the items work, or all the weapons. So in battle, the sword that you get later, the Excalibur, no, not the Excalibur. I can't even remember what it's called. Okay, good for a good point here. You see how I died in the middle of a turn and Tristram's on auto, so he prioritized me and revived me instead of attacking like he normally would have done. Uh, so the sword, if you have that out, will actually allow you to attack first sometimes. Again, speed's kind of a who knows what in this game. So sometimes it works, but you'll find out it doesn't really work that often. Uh, the axe really doesn't do much for you. It has a high crit rate, and that's about it. Um, nice. The claw, the which we'll get soon, gives you a magic attack boost. So that is probably our more important uh, weapon that we'll be using throughout the run. And as I said before, bombs hit no matter what, even if you're blinded. Same goes for your black and wizard magic. So once you finally bring Flamers down after three attempts, we get our first crystal. We'll get a short little cutscene here. Smash through those. I like to grab the bombs here. It's a, a two-step grab. So just that top chest. Don't grab anything else. Come over here. Do not forget to get this. I've never forgotten in my life. That's for sure. Come over here and jump over the turtle again. He will leave you I don't know why he doesn't wait for you to get out of the dungeon, but whatever. And from here, it's just kind of walking out the way you came. LR mashing through screen transitions, and here's where quicksand comes into play. If you are on emulator, I suggest you make a safe state at each of these two points coming up and kind of practice, because there are movements. If you uh, let it go, you'll see it kind of drags you in a certain way, and it will drag you that way even if you aren't holding the D-pad that way. So I just hold right. See how I still go slowly? You want to practice this until you can go fast through the entire thing. That one's pretty easy, but the next one is where it actually kind of requires a little bit of practice. So again, save state here, or if you're on console, then just walk back over and try this over and over until you get it. It's pretty tough to get consistent, so don't get too upset with yourself if it takes you a while. And we won't see, uh, we won't be using quicksand again until the very last dungeon, I believe. 
again. Walk through whatever way you came. So if you killed that worm on the left, obviously go the left side. LR mashing through screen transitions. Uh, if there's anything I don't cover or you feel I don't cover or you have any more questions, um, come watch me on stream. I stream this game pretty regularly. I'm still pushing for a world record. Uh, I'll have a link in the description. As you get to this point, we do have to take a detour here, bomb the skeleton. And again, we're going to try to quickly grab that shield. That allows us to have a little bit of a speed increase. And for some reason, you can actually tell with the shield, because the next dungeon you'll be slower if you don't get stuff. Get to the shield, I should say. All right, we are now going to grab this chest on the way out, only on the way out. The reason being, we want our inventory to look like a very specific set of items. So the top four items are going to be our consumables. So these four, and we need a very specific set. Um, you'll see as we go. So we're going to jump over that, and then we're going to jump out into the quicksand and hold left. Again, jump out into the quicksand and hold left. Jump and hold left. And that allows us to skip all those battles. And that brings us on the outside of Bone Dungeon. So we got the elixir, which was the whole point of that trip. Well, theoretically, Tristam had the elixir, and we had to do the trip for him to give us the elixir because he's kind of a dick. So come back to Kaylee's house, jump over her mom, and give her a quick chat. This is our last text box, the Focus Tower one, so try not to overmash or you'll either jump over her or stab her or something. Or... Again, we'll LR mash. We're done with this city forever. Now we're gonna be buffering our inputs on the overworld until we go to what is called the Focus Tower. Up to that cave, hold right, and then once we get to this cave, hold A. Take this quote unquote secret passage to the left. Ignore this dude. We'll only talk to him once, I believe, after the first cutscene. Now, this chest has bombs. Pretty much every single time you walk past it. If you ever need bombs, and because we make a trip through this place quite a few times, grab bombs. Otherwise, only grab them when I grab them. Uh, these doors are pretty finicky. This, like chests, I, I like to uh, click A to open the door and A to clear the text box of it unlocking. If you mash, you'll either swing your sword or drop a bomb. We're gonna come up through this first uh, staircase here in the doorway, and then just right out through this door here. Uh, if you go down, there is a fire spell, but it is not useful at all in any part of the game for you. This is where we meet our third party member. We're gonna grab this chest of bombs first, and then AV mash through this cutscene. This is uh, pretty much everybody's favorite partner. She is the strongest mage, and just overall, she does way more stuff for you than everybody else is gonna. So we'll immediately leave this cave, hold right, and until we get to the city. And then we're gonna LR buffer up one and then left until we get to Phoebe's house. I think it's Phoebe's house. If that guy gets in the way, just jump over him. Kind of A, B through this cutscene. After this question mark, you're just about done, so careful with your mashing. We'll come over this way. And then we're going to head to the right, to the wintry cave. All right, so here's where formations start to make a big difference. I will try to show you everyone and how to get through it. Again, if I miss something, come ask me a question while I'm streaming. This is where I start using uh, my tally maker if I need it. So I'm gonna go through every, go into every battle that has a scorpion or a turtle uh, on auto for Phoebe, just cause there's a high percentage chance we can just auto through it. As you can see, there's a two scorpion, a three scorpion, and then the bad formation would be a frog. Now, if I try to kill the frog with auto, you'll see that she only attacks the frog. The way auto works is they try to kill either the weakest enemy or the most of one kind. And they can only like, it's really weird how auto works. You would think that she would just use fire on everything because you can manually go through and use fire, but that's not how it works. So you, if you get a frog formation, you have to switch to manual and you can use fire. However, if you need seeds, this is one spot I would technically uh, use a seed because it does take extra turns to kill the frog or extra movements. Or you can switch to a faster weapon like the axe if you really want to. I use the bomb anyways because it's 100% accurate. So I would bomb and fire all. And you'll see that I'll leave the frog alive. 
and then whatever attack you do, as long as it hits, will kill the frog. Alright, whatever this thing is, too. We'll go into auto on all these battles, whatever the, the hedgehogs. So, as long as the enemies are the same, we can just hold A. But they're not the same, so we have to use fire again. Manually, I should say. And for a lot of these fights, it's either... Yeah, it's going to be those things, where it's just two scorpions, two of the hedgehogs, and one of the other thing. You just have to do it manually if they don't all match up. So, this fight is interesting, because... Um, if you are level four, and there's a, I guess what is called an edge hog, then they have potential to outspeed you, which is obviously not good. So this is another opportunity in which you would uh, do duplicate a seed. However, if you're level five at this point, the edge hog cannot outspeed you, so you can just fight it. Uh, to kill it, any formation here, you would queue up bombs, and on spell, you would come over to thunder and thunder all. And we used a thunder, so I take one off my thunder tally. Come over this way, we get a little cutscene. I forgot to switch to auto, so we'll switch auto there. If you are going to come straight left here, hold A because there is a wall that you can actually climb on now that you have the claw. And then if you let go, you technically get a tiny boost. Pretty much irrelevant. Going into this Edgehog battle on auto, just hold A, because fire will kill them by themselves. We'll climb up this wall. All you have to do is hold A and walk. If you let go, you fall down. That's kind of how it goes. So we'll come over here. Don't, well, you can. You can come over here and fight them from the right, but you just have to remember to hold A after the battle. So I like to come in on the bottom. Again, this fight is just like the very first fight. It can be two scorpions, three scorpions, or two and a frog. So just kind of dispatch them the same way we did that first battle. Again, hold A up here. It's, a, an, an, ed, it's an edge hog, so we'll stay on auto, but we got unlucky. So we do have to switch to manual and fire them. Now we're gonna switch to bomb and auto. We're gonna bomb this door. These next two fights are guaranteed to be just hold A's. Again, we use the thunder, take one down on your tally. Same exact thing. All right, we're gonna switch to manual after that fight. And we're gonna use thunder all here. Now, if you really wanted to, and you're really low on seeds, there's a thing called Strike First, just like in any other RPG, where you can have a turn completely unimpeded by the enemy. If you don't get a Strike First here, and you want to, you can duplicate a seed here and run away in hopes of getting a Strike First. But I wouldn't really... I don't know. I wouldn't care too much at this point. However, these fights are kind of, uh, kind of rough. These guys can end your run pretty quickly. But again, speed's just a... Uh, just a thought. So sometimes you're faster than all three. Sometimes all three are faster than you. Uh, make sure you're on auto going to this turtle. If you're keeping track, that is our fifth and final thunder for this section. So we'd actually pause here. You can heal up if you'd like. And by uh, to heal, you can do two things. You can go straight down to cure on Benjamin and heal that way. His is pretty weak until the end of the game. But it'll still, you know, serve its purpose. Or you can come over here. Like that. Or however you feel comfortable getting there. And cure with Phoebe. It's up to you. Um, I've accidentally used Exit, which is a spell that'll be in the top section. I've accidentally used it quite a few times in runs. So I almost always go over and heal with Phoebe. It is faster to use Benjamin. So whatever you feel comfortable with, if you start screwing up and use an Exit once you get it, then try using Phoebe's cure for a while. Uh, again, whatever you want to do. So after you're healed up, you're going to come over here and use a seed. If you are already... If the uh, the yellow border is already around Phoebe, it's another thing that the game's going to remember. So your seed's already going to be on Phoebe. So don't get that screwed up. So if you only cure Benjamin and you come up here, it's going to be on Benjamin. So just be careful what you do. Make sure you use the seed on Phoebe. 
switch back to auto. Any of these formations with these um, Minotaur, whatever they're called, Centaurs, you're going to switch to manual. Uh, again, you can run away if you want to try for a, a first strike. Or you can just try and get lucky like that again. Switch to auto for this Edgehog battle. Now, if you're not comfortable with um, trying to guess what you should be on, I would suggest you almost always go into battles on manual then, because it is so much faster to be able to switch to auto and then just mash A three times than it is to switch from auto to manual and then having to like switch to what you need to. Uh, so that formation can be the same as that first worm. So it can be two worms, three worms, or two and an edgehog. Uh, we're not worried about the edgehog now because we're level six. So I'll go ahead and just take him out with thunder and bombs. Again, an unlucky formation. So we'll switch over to fire manually. Now you can go into this one auto or manual. Uh, I feel like the chance of getting an auto fight is pretty low, but this can be either three turtles or two and one. Uh, again, if you really need seeds at this point, you can duplicate a seed if you get the centaur formation and try for a turtle one. There are so many places you can duplicate a seed, and it all comes down to the flow of the game and how, like, what formations you've gotten at one point. So don't get locked into any certain... Um, any certain kind of strategy with that. It's a learn as you go kind of thing. Um, if you are keeping track, we're already at three dupe seeds for this particular tutorial. Um, this is another fight in which you can duplicate a seed for and try to get a first strike because the birds can be kind of a bitch. And you can also get one with a turtle, which is technically a little safer. But we're already at four seeds, so if I dupe any more seeds, I'm just wasting time. So I'll end up going before a bird or two, so that's good. Uh, this can be three turtles or uh, the two and one again. If it's three turtles, switch to auto. It'll be nice and quick. Uh, if you're keeping track of your thunders, we are now out again. So we will first heal up. If you're only hurt like 50 HP, don't worry about it too much. Unless you're like dying to be full HP. But this boss is relatively easy. Uh, this would be the last fight you'd really want to duplicate seeds for in hopes of getting a strike first. Ooh, we got it. We didn't need the seed, but I wanted to show you. But that's really good. Like I said, these uh, centaurs can really ruin your day. So if you get a strike first, do not duplicate a seed on it. Just take it and go. All right, we are on our third boss, or fourth if you count Behemoth. That this is the Squidite. He's pretty easy. Um, he can still critical hit you and ruin your run, but you shouldn't have to heal, and you shouldn't really have to worry too much. So you're going to bomb all and thunder all. And you're just kind of going to cross your fingers and hope that you go before birds, and of course we don't. Kind of keep track on who's attacking, because I know there's still text boxes from the squid, so I'm going to keep matching and then stop. We're going to continue using Bomb, and then we're going to switch Phoebe from Spell to Attack. He's pretty resistant to spells, but a critical hit from Phoebe does like 650 damage or something like that. And she's got a pretty high chance to crit with the Bone Arrow. Theoretically. Again, you see right there the resistance glitch? She's resistant to the, the Sap spell, so when he tries it, he actually hurts himself and heals Phoebe. Okay, so if you're going to die, be careful with your mashing, because you're expecting another attack, but since he's dead, he won't happen. So just be careful. And can continue attacking. Again, you most likely won't die unless he gets a critical hit or two. He's only got a tiny bit of health. I don't have that number written down. But he's pretty easy. You really shouldn't have any troubles with him. Uh, at this point, I like to heal. Uh, if you're smart, you would use the uh, a cure potion or two. You absolutely cannot use all three until we get the next item. I like to set myself up too, so once you know what's happening next in the run, you can kind of like switch your weapons or switch your partner to what you need to be on. So I know the next fight I'm going to be on is going to be something that Phoebe kills with auto. 
and I know I need to be on Claw because we're about to climb up and down some walls. So after that Squid Eye fight, I actually will switch to Claw and Auto. As we're coming down the same way we came, uh, climb, but then let go of A to fall quickly. Walk all the way right. Once you hit the wall, go up, and then do not go up this wall, but the next one to the right. And you are going to grab this chest here. Remember, you need to have at least one cure potion here. If you do not, then the glitches will be screwed up. So now your inventory should be seeds, cure potion, heal potion. At this point, you can use a cure potion. If you wanted to wait to heal till now, you can. But you're safe to use that. So now you want a, a blank space there. And we'll just make our way out of the dungeon. All right, we're going back to the cave that we met Phoebe in. And we're going to go we are going to go through the teleporter. That's the item we just got from that chest behind the squid. Again, cutscenes are just AB. As soon as she walks back into your party, that's when the text boxes are going to stop. Um, the cutscene for this guy activates on the tile in front of him, so don't worry about like being too accurate with your mashing. It'll just start. Once you get the item, stop mashing, and we'll go back through the teleporter go to the city. LR up into this cutscene. There's some cutscenes that'll happen automatically, some that won't. So you have to just kind of take a step. Once you get these question marks right here, you'll have a couple more text boxes. All right, if you have not used your cure potions right now, you would want to use them. You do, You at this point, you need your inventory to be seeds, blank, and heals. We're actually gonna come up here to the inn. Talk to this uh, old man Santa here and buy zero. Just go down one, zero. And then immediately you're gonna want to use a cure potion, the zero. So notice how we now have two stacks of cure potions, theoretically, in our inventory. That is important. We're now gonna leave and go up. And this is the pillar puzzle. I switched to bombs right here. Push that one straight up, straight left till you hit the wall and go up one tile. And through this. And again, we set ourselves up earlier. So we can just hold A. Now our goal is to be level eight. Uh, lately, I have not been getting level eight very often at this this boss fight. It makes it a little, a little harder to be level seven, but it's still doable. You just die to uh, couple of his attacks in one shot. There's nothing you can do about it. Just kind of be aware that if you're level 7 it's, it might be a little tough. Now if your RNG up to this point has been so good that you have only one or two seeds duped, you can use this formation right here, the two Lamias and the Hag to uh, duplicate seeds because the good formation here is just two Lamias which Phoebe can kill with one auto. Otherwise just Thunder and Bomb. Again, you most likely will have all of your seeds duped at this point. We're gonna push that pillar to the right and in between. Obviously, uh, you're gonna have one space in between because you can only jump two spots at a time. Come back over to this pillar, this Lamia fight. And that's the good formation. So I'm gonna switch to auto and just smash A through real quick. Now, if you're keeping track of your thunders, we have one. And this boss, we're gonna kill almost exclusively using thunders so we're actually going to use a seed uh, again you should not have seven i think you should have either five or four i've duped a couple extra just to show um so i use a seed there if you have to heal heal but you shouldn't have to uh so push straight left go under and up make sure you don't push it left in front of this or else you're kind of stuck for a little bit you'd have to push it back right and go over uh so this first empty tile here where you can go past this last pyramid line up the corner with this corner of this cliff right here come back push this one up past it once you're on the left side push it right go back push this one right so these are one space apart 
come back over to this first pillar and you can actually walk right behind it. So don't do one of these. And then we're gonna push it all the way to the right here until we hit this first tile between these cliffs. And it's not the way you're intended to do this puzzle, but it's the obviously fastest. You kind of skip a fight and skip an area. We'll come back up the stairs on the right. Just jump across, jump across here. If you're feeling really ballsy, skip this heel, but I don't suggest it. There's quite a few times in this this route where you may have to use it and it might save your run. So this is our snow crab fight. Very easy, make sure Phoebe is on manual. You're gonna bomb and you're going to use fire off. That'll take care of the hags and then we just have to focus on the crab. Again, hopefully you're like, hey, we are level eight, that's good. At this point, we only need Benjamin alive for two attacks. We're gonna switch him to Axe. This is the only other fight where you kind of need to use the Axe. Um, so until he gets his two attacks off, I want Phoebe to be on, to heal him. So we're gonna switch her to Otto since he's almost dead. And hopefully he doesn't do that. So from here, you can either choose to cure her, heal her, or we just immediately die because she's confused. If she gets confused, it's pretty, pretty rough. Again, we need him alive for another attack, so... So, auto. We want her to heal herself, because if she dies, the run's over. So, we'll leave her on auto. Oop. I accidentally used secure, didn't I? Again, remember where your cursors are, or else something like that's gonna happen, and it'll waste a turn. So, that did about the same amount of damage as an axe. So, I theoretically don't need Benjamin any anymore. Um, the deal with Ice Crab, or Snow Crab... Well, he's got 3,000 HP, and what your numbers are looking for is you want two axe attacks and five thunders. That'll kill him. Generally, that's pretty easy to do. If you get lucky and you get four axe attacks, uh, then you only need four thunders. So we already have two if you account for Phoebe's fire. So we'll keep attacking with Benjamin, and then we'll switch to thunder. So we actually have zero thunder, so that's one. Again, keeping track on your tally, we have four total left. Holy cow, he's being really mean. Um, let's just keep attacking. We're at three axes. That's four axes, so now we only need four thunders. That is our second. Jeez, oh, wow. That's five axes. That's really lucky. If we get a sixth, then we only need to use three thunders. That's crazy. Oh, that's a critical. That counts for two. That's actually amazing. So if we get both these attacks off, we win. No, oh, just kidding. That's how good that fight was. That wasn't, well, it wasn't good. Either way, it's five thunders, two axes, and every two axes after that counts for one extra thunder. All right, so we cleared that boss. We'll just move one right to get these bombs that Phoebe's been holding in her pocket the whole time. That would not have been helpful at all. Uh, and then go ahead and heal up. Use a seed on Phoebe if you use all five thunders. If not, just keep track of where you're at using your tally. Go straight up. Switch to sword and go up to the statue to have a little cutscene play. Go ahead and hit A to smack the statue. Switch back to bombs. Uh, take this first tile. We don't need these chests yet. Again, do not get the chest yet. At this point, I like to be on manual just in case. This fight is like a 50-50 auto or manual, but again, it's really fast to switch to auto. So if all those other, if all, all of the enemies are the same, be on auto. It could either be the three Lamias or two and a Hag, I believe. So again, just Thunder Manly or Thunder All with auto. Stay auto on this. That can be three or two Hags, I believe. If I don't mention any extra formations, it's most likely because it's not going to change your strategy. Again, here, if they're all the same, use auto. If not, manually thunder all. And if you're keeping track, we are now out of thunders. So heal. Here we will use a seed and then heal if we have to. We don't need to heal right now. It is faster to, to use, an, use a seed and then heal, technically. But I like to heal than use a seed most of the time. Just to make sure I replenish the spells I just used. Alright, this formation can be... Two mages and a Lamia. Or it can be two mages. 
I'm not sure if it can be three mages, but if it can, it doesn't change your thing. If we can get a two, that'd be great. Ideally, you want a two here, um, because if it's a two, you leave Phoebe on auto and she just uses fire. If it's one with Alamia, you have to thunder all manually, and then take note that you've used an extra thunder. We'll come straight left here. There's a few fights. Same deal here. It can be either Lamias or Lamia with a hag. I think Next, this one might only be the three Lamias. Either way, you know how to beat either formation. Again, it can be mages. I believe a Lamia can be in here as well. If it's three mages, just keep Phoebe on auto and make sure you use your bomb. And the last fight here can be two different things. It can be a solo squid or a squid with a Camaro. Uh, I guess they call those things. Uh, if they, if you get the double here, switch Phoebe to manual, attack with bombs, and you can either use Thunder Solo on the Sphinx, or you can menu over to life, and as long as you remember to move it to the enemy, you can life the Sphinx. Again, if you want 100% accuracy, use Thunder, since the life can technically miss. There's that. If you do get a solo squid, then we will just leave Phoebe on auto and she will kill it for uh, the lottery number. If we ever get one. Alright, you might just have to believe me. There is technically a formation that is just a squid. There it is. Alright, again, leave Phoebe on auto. This is obviously faster, but... You gotta just gotta do what you gotta do. Whatever shows up. Adapt to whatever you get. Uh, so once you go through this door, we're going to go to the right at this fork. Quite a few more fights here. Again, leaving Phoebe on auto. These bird fights are kind of upsetting. If Phoebe misses, it kind of... It can put a damper on your day. However, leave her on auto. She will manually attack or use a bow to attack one of the birds and kill it if she hits. Now, if the magician heals, you have to switch Phoebe off of auto and use fire all. If he doesn't heal, then what you can do is use bombs and defend. If you don't want to use the spell, it doesn't really matter. Bombs obviously are a little bit slower, but if you're worried about your amount of fires left for some reason, use use the bombs so this is gonna be a beholder fight you can either kill these the same way bombs and defend or you can leave her on auto if you have the extra thunders again as I said before the games no there's no set routing like for thunders and for items well sorry there are there is a route for items but for like your spells be careful just because you may have worse formations like the mages with the the lamias if you have to use thunder two extra times Maybe use bombs on the Beholder fight so you don't waste the thunders. Um, you'll kind of learn as you go. There's no way I can go through every single scenario that might possibly happen. But if you do have any questions, just come ask me. Uh, this fight can be either the Freezer Crab by itself, or it can be the, the Crab with the Beholder here. If it's the Crab with the Beholder, we're going to switch to Manual, attack with bombs, and have Phoebe actually attack the Crab. Ideally, she does not get a critical hit. And the bomb will kill both at the same time. Again, that crab can either be faster or slower than you. Who knows? We'll have another beholder fight right here. So I'm going to switch to auto. I've got the thunders. We are going to switch to the sword. Because next we have a statue to poke. Switch right back to the bombs. And go back to that fork. Again, do not grab the chest. Do not be tempted to grab that chest. And now we'll go on the left side of the fort. Again, you know, the, the enemies are all the same. We're just going to be autoing. Good rule of thumb for the early game is just auto and bonds. Again, we have the stupid bird formation, so we auto. Mm. 
And he did not cure. So if we wanted to, which I'll just show you, we can bomb and defend, and that'll take care of him. Alright, so there was a little issue, but we're back. Things will look a little different, but they're, we're in the same exact spot. So this fight's gonna be one of the two Beholder fights. And you're gonna go ahead and either auto if you had the Thunders, or bomb defend like the other fights. All down to what you've got. And then we'll have another Beholder Crab or Single Crab fight. And in that case, Single Crab, we're gonna bomb defend. If it's a crab beholder, again, use the bone arrow on the crab and bomb. We already know how to do this one. Hug this top wall here, don't go down to the bottom. You get another bird formation. And when there's no Magician, you can still use the same rules. You can, uh, they can't cure themselves. So as long as Benjamin's alive, you can still do a bomb defend. Or if she gets stoned, then also you can just bomb. But fire's technically faster since she goes first. And the animation's a little slower, or a little shorter. Up to you. Another easy fight. And this room, you do want to go a little bit to the bottom. And obviously, it's just kind of straightforward until this point here. Now, this fight can have a few different, uh, a few different formations. We can have the two Sphinx, the two Sphinx and the one Beholder, and I believe that's it, actually. So, for this formation, what you want to do is Bomb and Thunder All. If you get the two Sphinx, obviously, which is better. Or faster. If we can get it again. There are a few options on this one. So, you're going to Bomb no matter what with uh, Benjamin. And now you can either Thunder Single, if you have extra Thunders, for the guarantee. Or you can... Uh, life, one of them, or you can Thunder Double. Um, life obviously is quick, but it has a chance to miss. Thunder Single is good because you take out one of the turns of the Sphinx, because they will most likely both go before Benjamin. Um, thunder Both, you're kind of banking on Benjamin outspeeding them both. So I normally will Thunder Single if I have the Thunders, and if I don't, then I will Life Single here. And then Benjamin will kill the second one with the box. And if he goes before him, then that's great. But I usually don't like to, to risk it. Alright, so we are still looking right here. So when you get up here, we're actually going to fall straight down ahead of us. And from here, we want to immediately grab this left heel potion chest. Jump over it if you want to waste a frame. Go up here if you want to save a frame. Hug this left wall. And again, thunder if you have it. And then switch to sword on your downtime here. Hit that statue back to bomb. And we're going to go actually over this right chest. So, this is where our inventory gets a little glitchy. Right now, as we went over before, these four are our, our, our consumable items. Normally, this... Uh, You'd have like refreshers in one of these spots, so you have one slot for each of these items. But because we kind of tricked the game into thinking we had two stacks of cure potions, when we write in refreshers, it'll try to go here, but instead it'll kind of underflow into the key items. Uh, so this is the same as the last Sphinx. You can have two Sphinx in a gather or two Sphinx alone. So again, on this one, we're gonna thunder all and bomb. We are going to grab this chest. So now you can see we have um, a 
key and a thunder rock. What was that? The magic mirror. However, the magic mirror doesn't work. Interesting. I didn't even know we got it. So make sure you jump over that chest, grab the noble armor, come back this way, the same way we came. And now instead of falling down the pit, we're gonna follow it to the right. Another bird fight here. Deal with it like all the other ones. Uh, this is a fight to, that you can easily overmash on. If the second bird attacks and actually petrifies one of your characters, the turn will immediately end. And I've run away on many occasions on accident from that. So just be be careful. Keep uh, pay attention, basically. That's what happens to me is I don't pay attention very well. All right. So between after you get that refresher that we just got to heal, we can use our cure potions in slot three. After the after this whole dungeon, we want these three to be gone. So if you can use them to heal to kind of take them out of your inventory as you go, that's beneficial. Uh, this fight, you have two options. We can auto, auto bomb, she'll attack the bird. And uh, the other way you can do this is bomb and you can thunder all. If you have the thunders, you can do this for a guarantee. Uh, the other way, if she misses the bird, then it's kind of an extra turn. It's up to you. Most of the time you won't have those extra thunders at this point, but if you find yourself with them and want a guarantee hit, then by all means. Uh, so bomb that little cracked ice, fall down, don't smack, uh, or don't mash R and L as you're falling, because if you accidentally switch weapons in a certain frame, you will actually soft lock or hard lock the game. But safely switch the sword at one point, go straight up, hit this, switch back to bomb, and fall down one more time. And we're going to go down here, fight this invisible enemy. I believe we've had this formation quite a few times. Thunder all and bomb. Take care of it. Now at this point, we have to look at our uh, spells. So we've got one more wizard spell. We'll grab that knight sword, by the way. When we're done with this dungeon, like I said, we need this slot to be empty, but we also need this slot to still have a seed in it. So I duped at least one extra seed plus whatever I used extra. Because we need the next item we get to go into that third slot. So if we use all our seeds, then it's gonna go in the first slot and the uh, underflow is ruined. So if you are at this stage of the game and see that you need a, like you need one more seed, then go ahead and dupe it on any of these fights as soon as you find out. Again, that we're gonna, these next two, we're just gonna thunder, thunder all and bomb. And you're kind of just crossing your fingers that you go before the, both of the sphinxes. So I don't need to heal here, but I'm going to. We are about to fight the ice golem. Now he's pretty easy, uh, but he obviously, can RNG you to death. He has 6,500 health. Oh yeah, jump across those gaps. It's obviously a lot slower to go around like that. Uh, each bomb that you do, that you attack with, you're gonna count as 400, and each fire you're gonna count as 600, because that's like within 10 uh, actual damage. So six. So basically, you just want to count up to 65, and that's just so at the very end, you can choose to defend instead of heal if you know you're close. So as you can see, we did not get level 11, which is ideally where you want to be. Um, once you get to a point like this, this is where you have to make a decision, because technically, if you put Phoebe on auto, she won't heal. So I would most likely manually heal both on, a, on this turn, just because they're both so close to half. That way, we guarantee Benjamin gets his turn. That puts us at, what, 24? And then we can put her on auto and heal that. It is relatively important that he stays alive during this fight. Uh, he's the only one close to half right now, so we'll actually switch back. And make sure you go back to fire if you did 
steer manually. Alright, that's fine. Again, we'll switch to auto. Now, the reason you want to do auto instead of manual here is if he does end up going before Phoebe and Benjamin dies, then she will still use the appropriate spell and, and revive them. So, auto when you can. Not only is it faster, it, it's just more protective. So, as you can see, the, the Ice Golem just used Sap. So, we have to add 200. If you're doing the math, add 200 to the, the health. I lost track because I was talking so much, but I know we're very close, so I most likely will not be healing again. That's fine. Yeah, we're, we're fine now. Alright, so that was Ice Golem. Uh, if you're doing an emulator, kind of save state there, or if you're on a console, save, make a save file in front of it. Give that one a, a, couple, of, a couple rounds of practice. Do your counting. Um, do your menuing from fire to cure. That can screw people up a lot, especially at first. But other than that, pretty easy fight. You're looking for a time of... With this route, 30, a low 37 is pretty solid. If you get a 36, you are on great pace. Grab the coin. Fall straight across from the coin. And then move right one square. It's pretty important, and I'll show you why. So if I fall right where we landed, I land on the left side of this noble armor room. If I go one right... We actually land on the right side. So one step equals 25 steps saved. So just make sure you go out the way you came in, going downstairs instead of walking around again. And also re remember, you have to use these cure potions. So we should have seed, cure, blank, and heals. You could also use a cure potion in the Ice Golem battle instead of... Um, Instead of autoing Phoebe, it's up to you. Whatever you're comfortable with. Technically, it might save you a few a second or two, but overall, not a much, uh, not much to make a difference. And we're still walking. Just remember to cut your corners. And there's Oliver again. All right, so we're gonna hug the left wall as we come down this last stretch. We're gonna grab this chest full of bombs. And then we're gonna grab this chest right here, refreshers, refreshers. So now your inventory should be seeds, cures, refresher, and heal. And that is the appropriate uh, inventory for us to set up for the next trip. Again, you should probably only have one seed at this point. If you were duping the correct amount of seeds. So, just go down past the city. We're going to go to this battlefield that's right above this cave. And this is the, everybody's favorite battlefield, the exit one. So, if you get a lot of these, you might just restart your run 40 minutes in. Uh, there's no easy way to defeat this formation. And they almost 95% of the time will attack you first. There'll be a surprise attack. So, as soon as you get in here, run. But the thing is, if you see the... Like right here, I'm going to start D-pad and B-mashing. If you mash A and you don't happen to get attacked or surprise attack, you will most likely start mashing into a battle. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Yeah, so you don't want to do that. So if you see a Chimera up on the screen, or a Sphinx, start mashing B. Excuse me. That'll just ensure you don't mess up. Otherwise, if you see just a squid, mash A. If the squid gets an unexpected attack and you're holding A, then it'll just stay up on the screen and go clear really slowly. So this is the only time, besides three battles that are coming up, that I would actually mash A for. And that's just in case. Like, you could never get unexpected, technically. But it's better to be safe than get stuck staring at a text box. And you have to defeat 10 battles, so 10 squids. You can definitely get unlucky. I'm not sure if it's exactly a 50-50 for, for either or of the formations, but I have definitely had my fair share of bad ones. And had my... I think I've had actually three perfect ones with zero uh, sphinxes. It's pretty rare. Anything three or under is 
is usually pretty acceptable. But I think at one point I did have a PB with five. Five Sphinx encounters. Either way, it doesn't matter. It's just a, yet another layer of RNG in this game that'll prevent you from getting a record. Alright, I think I'm gonna hold A. Maybe we'll see if we get an unexpected attack. Oop, nope, we're not gonna do that. if we get an unexpected attack. Jeez, please. Yeah, okay, see, that's what happens. If you're not ready for it, then you're just gonna slowly clear those boxes. near the end is when you feel like you'll never get a solo squid again. There we go. Alright, and we got exit. So now from here, go left and down until you hit the focus tower. Just make sure you go in the top. Don't go down right away and then go into the front of it. Do you want to go through this back entrance? Go down these stairs. Mash LR. Go over to this bombable wall. And this is what we did with the when we got those refreshers in the ice pyramid. We unlocked the key for the Venus shield. From here, push this down until you uh, touch corners again. Push that left all the way down and all the way left again. And from here, we're going to use exit. Uh, heal up if you need to. Sometimes the squids can actually critical hit you and you end up with like 200 HP. Uh, go back this way, and now we're going into the front of Focus Tower. We're just going out the way we came. Grab these bombs right here. Uh, we can open up this door. And then open up this door. And go all the way out this way. This is a... If you're not new to this route, or to this uh, game, you're going to notice that that's a pretty big difference. We're definitely uh, changing things up here. So switch to your sword before this mummy shows up. The cutscene starts on the tile that I'm currently standing on. And this is a relative, like, the hardest fight in the game. Switch to spell and use exit. And just mash A until you win. He can put you to sleep, he can petrify you, he can hit you for critical damage. There's a reason that I most like, or I, I always say it's the hardest fight in the game. So, go until you get lucky. We'll go check on our boy Ruben down here, which we haven't seen yet. And then our favorite partner... Short little cutscene there. Make sure we're on manual here. And exit out of here. So from now on, whenever we're leaving a place with very few exceptions, we want to exit. It's just going to be faster no matter what. Uh, head right once to the Alive Forest. Switch to your axe. We'll go ahead and do these two trees here. The less trees, the fewer trees, the faster it's going to be. And then from here, we cannot put Tristam on auto, or else he will use items and it'll be very slow. So there's two options here. Uh, if you get a three mummy formation, you want to run away. Tristan cannot kill a mummy in one hit, but Benjamin can exit pretty much every enemy way. And then uh, Tristan can kill a specter in one hit, unless he gets uh, debuffed. So if you get two mummies, just exit, defend. And if you get this formation, you can either run away for a two mummy or you can exit and manually attack the specter. 
with Tristram. And then you're gonna, oh my goodness. And then you're gonna want to uh, defend with Tristram from, uh, from here on out on this fight. Again, uh, exit's a white spell, so it has a roughly 10% chance of missing. And this formation uh, can either have one mummy, no mummies, or, uh, sorry, two specters with a mummy, two specters alone, or three specters. And uh, here you want to exit the mummy, if there is one, and then manually attack a specter. With Tristan. So if he does that attack, if the specters do that attack where you take one damage, if he does it to Tristan, that means that he will no longer be able to kill a specter, so you'd want to exit defend. But since he used it on Benjamin, I can still kill this with Tristan. Alright, switch to your axe again. And this bottom row of trees is the one we're going to take. Switch back to sword, and it's going to be the kind of the same thing here. We can get two specters, three specters, or two and one. Obviously, if you can get two enemies on all three of these encounters, you can have a great time. Alright, we're going to go ahead and talk to the great Deku tree here. We'll get a little cutscene with Tristan coming out. Once he goes back in, we will go ahead and use Exit. And go left to the Focus Tower once again. That was uh, the last time we'll see Tristan, those three fights. Skip the staircase. Come out here, and we're actually going to go into the second door now. Now, if you are familiar with these speedruns, this will be a little bit more familiar for you. Jump across, go left. Up into here, and go up from here. From here, just kind of go up to hit the city, and we'll finally get the best music in the game. About an hour in or so, 50 minutes. So we're gonna go left up here to this hotel. At this point, um, you could have used a seed, because you'd only have one left, but you could have used a seed at any point um, during your exit menuing. It all depends on what you have in your inventory. As long as you have these three items here, you can use your seed whenever. Just make sure you have enough white spells for Benjamin to use for the bridge. So you're going to come here and actually buy zero seed, just like we did with the cure potions earlier. And then use them from at any point from here to to this lady. And now you can see we have infinite, well, not infinite, but a ton of seeds and a ton of sky coins. Now we're gonna come to this old lady, go up three times and right once. So basically we're gonna buy 32 of these. You can't see a difference now. Well, it's on our key items, I suppose. But we're gonna exit out and actually go right back in. And this time we're gonna go left down into this little house, left to the stairs, and through the teleporter. And surprise, surprise, we are in the city we need to be in. Make sure you exit out after the teleporter. Do not make the mistake of exiting before the teleporter. All right, now come up here. If you forget and start going left, you can jump over this little block of uh, pond if you need to. You need to be on this upper tile of this bridge area to go through here. And then this is kind of just a one-way street all the way to the cutscene. Again, we don't care about Tristram at all. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier in this tutorial, but Tristram is a piece of garbage. So there's no point in healing him on the bridge. You shouldn't have to. He, I don't think he's ever died on me before. And we get rid of him right now, so it's not our problem anymore. Do not go over this first bridge. There is nothing there. Instead, jump over this one tile above the bridge and talk to this guy. Spencer, maybe. You'll have a little cutscene where Tristan 
gives us the Dragon Claw, which is where we start getting good, uh, good boosts to our magic damage if we use it in battle. And it also has the ability to petrify an enemy if you use it as an attack, which is an option in the next section. So you have a, a text box when Phoebe first comes up to you, and then a text box a after she leaves the screen. So don't stop mashing until you see that second one. And then you've got this one text box, and you give, a, give her the old shrug. Hold start here to open your menu, and exit out quickly. At this point, if you're gonna, if you need to seed at any point, you have, you'll never use all of them in a run. So feel free to seed, especially if you're, you're new at this run, seed as many times as you need to. Uh, come back to, which I thought was Phoebe's house, but maybe it's, I don't know, Kaylee's here now, that's all I know. She's better, apparently, and leveled up a ton. So once you get her, hold start, and you're gonna exit again. And now we're going back to the focus tower, the lower half, or the front. So the way exit works in battle, you've already seen, you you can just banish somebody to, to another realm. Um, the way it works outside of battle is it will take you out of the exit that you most recently entered. So there's an arrow spell in here, which we are about to get. But if I didn't reset my entry point to this, then I would exit back to the front by the other city we were just in. So as you come through, go all the way through, exit here, and just hold A to get back in. And now we will be taking the stairs down. Just follow the path. And we'll fight this guy. So we're gonna go ahead and switch to sword because we technically sometimes get a speed boost. Not that it matters here, but we'll start using the sword a lot late uh, for the next few parts of this uh, run. Doesn't matter who you exit, we gotta strike first. Even if you don't get a strike first, just exit and arrow or life, up to you. Arrow is a 100% accuracy. Life is just a little bit faster animation. Almost every single enemy can be lifed from this point on, and except for these chimeras. They, for some reason, cannot be lifed. So here I could actually choose to exit the chimera and life the minotaur. Unfortunately, we did miss our, our exit on the first turn. Exit in battle also does not give us experience. So we get the, the arrow spell and exit, and as you can see, we come out this way, which is exactly where we need to be. Head right two times again to the Alive Force, switch to your X, and we'll be doing the exact same thing we did with Tristan, but with an actual partner. Now, if you are level 12 here, you can kill two mummies if you have the claw equipped by using arrow on all. Um, so if you're not level 12, just stay on your sword. And you can arrow all with both characters, and it will kill them all. If there's two mummies, just arrow all with both characters, and um, Kaylee will actually kill them by herself. But if this happens, just keep using arrow all until you get through the through the battle. The same cannot be said for the specters. You cannot kill two as Benjamin. But with this right here, we can arrow all with Kaylee, and we'll kill them right away. So obviously, ideal is two on all three formations, and then you just do three attacks with Kaylee. Oops. Again, if it's any three where there are only there's only one mummy, just arrow all in both. And then hopefully that doesn't happen. Mm. All right, talk to the Deku Tree one more time. All righty. We are level 12, so we can switch to clock here. I think this is always three mummies. So you can arrow all and then arrow single here. And the reason we do this is to get rid of one of the enemy attacks. It will speed things up just a little bit. And then hopefully Benjamin lives to get his attack off. 
Perfect. Unfortunately, we have to heal Benjamin a lot because he is very weak. Switch to your sword. And then these three next fights, they're always going to be a strike first. Every single time, no matter what. So just, these are the three fights you actually mash into. So we're going to exit and manually attack, or you can switch to auto, except sometimes she does arrow, so I like to stay on manual. And then we can just hold A. Those will either be the two stumps and a scorpion, or just two stumps. Doesn't really matter either way, that's the same strategy. And now that we're on the exact uh, on the right spells, we can actually just mash all the way through. Because again, this is going to be a strike first, guaranteed. That way you're not stuck sitting there looking at that strike first text popping up. We'll switch to our claw, climb up this wall right here. And then we can actually grapple with this dragon claw over to these little trees. Stop one tile short there. Stop one, oh, not on this one. Again, you can jump over them if you want to waste a frame. All the way to the end of the wall here, stop one tile short. And right there. Keep your claw out, because there's one, two more we have to do. Stop two tiles short of the scorpion. And claw there. This is our last guaranteed uh, surprise attack for strike first. So again, mash through that. Awesome, we missed. All right, so now we have normal battles, but this is still gonna be an exit and attack manually with Kaylee uh, until you forget that you don't have any spells. So I don't think that'll kill, actually. And if this happens to you while you're practicing, just kind of mess around and see what actually works. I obviously can't go every, go through every single scenario. If you find something that you think might be faster, test it out or let me know and I'll test it out. So obviously double arrow doesn't kill. So there's no way you'd try that. So now we gotta make sure we seed. Switch to your sword and poke the face. And, okay, this is where things get a little uh, complicated, I suppose. So, these, this first room has a bunch of worms, and we fight them a bunch. And there's two formations they can be. They can be a formation of three, or they can be a formation of two. If you get a formation of two, you want to load Benjamin up on exit and switch Kaylee to arrow all. That will kill them in one turn. If you get a three worm formation, there are a few things we can do here. We can switch to our claw and attack, hoping for a petrify, because that's the dragon, uh, the dragon claws effect. And then we can manually attack with Kaylee, or auto attack with Kaylee. She will auto axe these. And that is one of the reasons I don't like this strategy. You can very easily die as Benjamin. So, that's what you would do on a three worm. Um, you can also, I think, no, that's by far the fastest way to do it if you're gonna fight it. So the way I do it is I run away from three worms until I get two worms. These are all theoretically 50-50. And timing it out, which myself and Calm Lamini have done pretty extensively, you can run away up to three times on some of these formations and actually save time instead of fighting a three worm off the bat. So it's up to you. It's personal preference. I don't think a lot of people know about the running from worms strategy, uh, or at least that it's faster. So kind of play with it yourself and uh, just do what you feel comfortable with. So again, we're gonna run. And it is what it is. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you get really unlucky. And when you're grinding for a record, the, I kind of take risks, so. I run away and try to get twos if I don't get them off the bat. So I ran twice there, and I still saved, I think, it's like four to six seconds. Obviously, two worms off the bat is perfect. Again, it's just a lot of worm formations. 
I think you can also arrow all with both characters and kill three worms. But it's not really faster. Because you can still die really easily because all three worms still get an attack off. Either way you want to do that, make sure after, after that last worm we have our sword out. And then switch to axe. Because now we've got some... Well, switch to axe if you're going to be running away. But if you're not, then keep out your sword or your claw, whatever you're doing. Uh, keep arrowing these worms. Make sure you go left here. And then down. This room can also have a formation with two worms and an ooze. And oozes are really annoying enemies that reflect magic. So let's see if we can't get one here. Okay, so if you're not running away, you can also attack with the claw on this and attack the worms with Kaylee and hope for a petrify. The main benefit of the running strategy is that for the entire first two rooms, you do not have to heal. But then, this is what happens sometimes if you do decide to fight all of these things. Which, it doesn't always happen and sometimes you get lucky. So again, just mess with it yourself and see what happens. After that third worm, we're going to go straight up here. Don't fight that fourth one. I like to heal and use seeds after this last mushroom. Because if I do, then I guarantee myself having enough spells till the uh, end of the dungeon. We're gonna fight this formation. Make sure your claws out after this fight. And you can actually, instead of coming up here to climb over this, just walk straight left and let go as you move out and you'll just fall down. We're gonna keep uh, running from these worms and hopefully get lucky. Sometimes you don't get lucky. This room has a roughly 33% chance for each formation, so it's really just a numbers game. And I know it's kind of sucky to sit here running away four or five times, but it, just think about it this way. This is our, this will be our fifth run. If I were to fight this formation, it would still be slower for me to fight this than run away two more times and get a two. So yeah, I could have fought that three, but then I still would have been technically slower than just running away. So you either commit to it or you don't do it at all. This entire speed run's about luck, and if you're not willing to do that, then you should, probably shouldn't be running this game. So we have two more worms that can be ran. Oh, that we can run away from in the next room here, two rooms for now. This formation, we're gonna wanna make sure we exit and manually attack. Because if we use auto, she might use arrow on the frogs, which does not kill. You don't have to heal poisons right away, it's just a little slow because if uh, you have a a battle that goes two turns, it'll tick down, so we got a lot of two-turn battles coming up here soon. Poke that, uh, go straight up, poke that face. This is our second-to-last worm that we can run away from. Hey, we got a good formation anyways. And we're gonna do the same thing here, exit and manually attack. Switch over to your claw. And for these, we're actually going to make sure in the last two little things here, drop down. Make sure you're holding A again. Again, drop down. And from here, instead of going up to this area, just walk straight right and make sure you're holding A. 
and you'll just fall right there like that. This is our last worm that we can run away from. So if you're doing runaway strats, as soon as you get two here, you can just be relieved, hopefully. Just remember that you are on attack from that last frog formation. All right, stab this face and switch to bombs. And now we've got ooze luck that we have to deal with. So almost all of the oozes coming up can be uh, either two oozes or two oozes and a skeleton. And there's multiple ways we can do these fights as well. So the original strategy is to just leave Kaylee on auto and Benjamin attack with bombs. They are weak to bombs and Kaylee plus a bomb will kill one. And then once she, uh, we wouldn't auto here because Benjamin's below half. So we'd manually attack. And then we have to come through here and heal. So that's the original strategy. I'm not sure who well does it. I'm not sure if anybody else does my strategy, but I'll show you that once we get another ooze fight. This will be two skeletons. Again, we'll double arrow with Kaylee to take that out. At this point in the game, Kaylee kills just about everything that's uh, two formation with arrow, as long as it's not oozes or something. Switch over to your X. We're gonna go, basically the only way we can go. Except for when you get here, go right. And we're gonna switch back to bounce. And here is my strategy. Well, can't show you because we got skeleton. All right, so what I do is while I, I will attack with bombs and defend with Kaylee. If you remember, we did that resistance glitch. So if the oozes happen to do a sap attack, she will actually gain health. And this way, Benjamin doesn't take any damage as long as there's not a skeleton in the formation. And this way you almost never have to heal unless you get a bunch of skeleton formations, which is pretty unlucky. So, do it either way. Whatever you think is best doesn't really matter to me, obviously. Um, so if you do get a skeleton, you're gonna wanna still bomb all and then arrow single on the skeleton. It'll take care of the skeleton. And then even if you were doing the normal strat, you'd still wanna defend with Kaylee after this first turn. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. I would just attack defend. If you do attack with Kaylee, it would technically will take one of the turns from the enemies. But then Benjamin could die, so who knows. Switch over to your clock, coming up here. And then at this point, you kind of just weigh your options. Like, if I revive him, then the oozes both get another turn, and then there's still two more turns after that. So I'm going to attack with Kaylee. Hope that one of them saps Kaylee, because if they do, then they die to one X. It may not be ideal. It's just what I do. We can also critical hit. Eh, unlucky. So hopefully the other one saps us here. Yeah, if Benjamin dies and you still have two full health oozes, it's kind of just a crapshoot. We have two, well, this room and then the boss. Uh, going into this fight, I like to have Claw out because we can have an ooze in this formation, like this. It can either be three worms or two in an ooze. So if we do get the ooze, I like to manually attack with the Claw on the ooze. Just like you would do if you're doing normal attack strats throughout the, the dungeon. And that's what you're hoping to have happen. And then you just attack with both. That was a good fight. We'll switch back to bomb here. And you already know how to do this. I think that's the first sack we've had. That's what it looks like. Right, 
this will be another two skeleton. So again, double uh, arrow all with Kaylee. And another formation that can have an ooze, so make sure the claw's out. If he doesn't kill, then theoretically it'll kill him on the next one as long as he hits. Or if that happens, I suppose. Back to bomb, we've got one more ooze fight, and then two skeleton fights, and then the boss. You don't have to heal before this fight, this next one, because it's always going to be a two skeleton, but the one after that is a three skeleton every time, so you might want to be mostly healed for that. We'll go ahead and switch to Claw here. So it's the sword. And fight the skeleton on the right. And it's going to be an arrow all with both characters. And you're just kind of hoping that Benjamin gets his turn. Hey, the sword actually worked for once. All right, from here, you're going to want to full heal and seed up. Switch over to Claw. And we are on to the boss, Gidra. Uh, we want to be on sword when we come up here. So Gidra has 13,000 HP. And we're going to start off the fight by using an exit on one skeleton and an arrow single on the other. But you actually have to move your cursor over. If I do both on this skeleton, then Benjamin will attempt to exit the boss and that will not work. So make sure you separate your attacks to the different skeletons. Ah, uh, that is unfortunate. So, if you're in this uh, situation here where you have a skeleton alive still, we know for a fact that Kaylee's going to outspeed Benjamin. So we're already going to switch to our claw to give us the magic damage boost. Switch over to arrow, attack Gidra, and then arrow the skeleton with Kaylee. That way the skeleton doesn't get another attack, and we get a guaranteed damage on the boss. Ooh. That's unlucky. So from here, if you want, switch to the sword. I don't know if it really makes a difference for casting spells on yourself. Uh, but go over to heal and heal Kaylee and hope that Benjamin lives. Nice. Switch back to your claw if you did switch. An arrow and auto. So that way Kaylee will revive you if you die. Again, one of the many ways that RNG in this game can ruin your run and you can do nothing about it. If he had killed Benjamin, then it would have been a wipe and you had to start over. And it can happen at any time during the battle, so if it was... 20 HP before he was dead. We could just end the run there. But keep going up. Uh, arrow with both characters until one gets low enough to heal. And then auto with Kaylee. And he'll go down pretty quickly. Once you get the skeletons out of the way, you're, you're pretty golden unless he decides to use Petrify a lot. But otherwise, he doesn't do a ton of damage to Kaylee without crits. This is his last little... Uh, right here. So he's close to dead. This might do it. There we go. Perfect. That was a decent fight. This, the petrify is a little annoying, but didn't cause us to die. Oh, boy. Got a nice little goon kid in the background. Which is apparently supposed to say go on, kid, according to my moderator, Dancing Man. So make sure you do not use exit right now because there's actually one more thing we have to do in the tree. Use the claw, go down there, go down this vine, and we're actually gonna go up from here. And then down here, make sure you're letting go of A to fall down quickly. Keep holding down. And we're gonna go down right here. So don't get that chest. Just follow this path down. Make sure you have your ax out at this next room. 
and then go left underneath these little logs here. And then we're gonna go left up all the way around. Uh, this is the one, like, circumstance where doing a zigzag is actually slower. So don't go up like this. Make sure you follow the big L on both corners here. Grab the meteor spell. Now we can exit out. We're gonna go down, right, right, and up to the Cindy City of Windia. So if you're familiar with this part, uh, with the speed run, you're gonna uh, you're gonna remember this part, but it's a little different because we're in a different city. So we're gonna come up to the inn first. Uh, we need to make sure. Oh, never mind. We're good. Come up to the inn, and here we're going to buy 31 cure potions. At the other city, it was 32. So we come up here, buy 31. That'll correct our inventory. We'll use exit to quickly get out of the town, but hold A to go right back in. Straight left up to this house, and we want this blue lady to cooperate. She's going to sell us a cupid locket. When you talk to her, mash A only. If you mash B, you can say no, and then she can run away from you. It can be a little frustrating. So just remember to mash A until you get the Cupid Locket. Go up behind her house to the left so you don't get blocked by a person. Left down these stairs here and through the teleporter. Through the stairs, talk to this guy at the table. He will give you the Mega Bombs. Mega Grenades, I guess. Right back through the teleporter. Hold Start and Exit. Right back in the city, and this time we're going to the Chocobo House. It has a little Chocobo weather vane, so I just call it Chocobo. Talk to Old Man Sunglasses here. Uh, once Kaylee comes back in your party, you stop mashing. Don't do what I just did. Then we're, we'll exit out. And we're gonna go down right up to bring us to Mount Gale. So here, if we are level 16, we can do all of our all of our fights with the sword out. If we are level 15, we need to use the claw until we hit level 16. If you're doing the runaway strats from the worms, there's a good chance you'll be level 15 here. Almost everything in this uh, mountain is gonna be a three enemy formation, but they're all treated the same way. So we wanna go down a meteor. And with Kaylee, we want to arrow on a single enemy. It doesn't really matter what one. As long as there's only two left by the time Benjamin's turn Benjamin's turn comes. Oh, that's not good. Uh, at this point, we'll just arrow single the last two. Arrow double will not kill both at once. So if you are level 15, there's a good chance you'll get level 16 here. At that point, you're going to come through and use a seat on Benjamin. Once you hit level 16, your wizard spells go from 3 to 4. And there's a total of 5 fights in this uh, area that we have to do. So if you seed after that first fight, you're guaranteed to have enough for the rest of the... until the boss. Uh, so go ahead and grapple across that Y that we just went on and then jump over this little gap. Come down and fight this green guy. Again, we will meteor and arrow single. You can hold A through all these fights because they're all going to be exactly the same, unless there's a two. Again, go ahead and heal Benjamin if he gets below half health uh, outside of battle. Try not to heal in battle. It's pretty slow. Keep Bones Pat down to the right here. Fight this Dracula. We are going to go ahead and heal. Down the stairs he was guarding. Down these stairs. Now from here, try not to go up here. Always go right. There is literally nothing up. And I still, when I started running, I went up there every single run. All 
Alrighty, we have one battle left, one meteor left. All the way up the top of these long stairs, jump over the bottom part of the bridge and fight our last guy. Again, if uh, any of the formations here end up being a two enemy formation, you're going to use Meteor and defend with Kaylee. Or you can use Arrow single with both of them, or Arrow double with both. It's, it's really up to you. But using Defend with Kaylee will most likely not uh, make you not have to heal. After that fight, we are going to heal up and see. And this is our uh, good friend Dolahan. We're going to start off strong with uh, switching to your claw for the extra magic. Use Meteor and Arrow single. Arrow double works as well, but this just prevents a, uh, an enemy from getting an, an attack. Now, Dullahan's kind of a bitch. She can use Doom Dance, and that's pretty much the most dangerous thing. You can also get critical hits. But for the most part, you're going to want to leave Kaylee on auto for the entire fight and then use Meteor. You want to count out Kaylee's attacks. So that's one. Also count out yours, I guess. You have four Meteors, so if after four, you know you need to use a seed. So that's two Kaylee attacks and two Meteors. It takes eight total to defeat Dullahan with three axes, or three attacks from Kaylee. So she's gonna, yep, heal us there. That was our our fourth meteor. So we know we need to see. That's our third attack from Kaylee. We're at the perfect HP. She's going to heal both of us. Using items is very quick, so if you use it in battle, make sure you don't overmatch because it will it will happen. That's our fifth meteor. Sixth medium. Yep, this is our seventh. And the reason we count out is so we can do stuff like what's going to happen here. We could have technically defended Benjamin on this last turn since we do know there's only two meteors left. So we can meteor here and defend. Just in case he does use Doom Dance or get a critical hit, we can guarantee we get that spell off. And there's Dolahan. It's pretty easy if you get good RNG. But that's not what this game is about. Again, try to seed first instead of spell, or else you're going to be like triple menuing like I just did there. Uh, exit out, go down, left, and up, back to Windia. From here, we're going to Chocobo House. Talking to old man glasses again. Tiny little cutscene here. And we will exit out yet again. We're going to hold up to go to Pazuzu's Tower, the RNG of all RNG. Make sure we're on bomb and manual. And also keep in mind that we were just on the meteor spell, so our cursor will still be there. Now, normally we would want Kaylee on auto, but there's a decent chance at this fight. That if we use her on auto, she will... Of course, she's not going to do it as I'm talking about it. But if you leave her on auto, there's quite a few times where she will use an arrow spell like that. And these guys just reflect magic. So, to avoid the risk of that ever happening, I put her on manual and manually attack. Just for this first one. It doesn't happen on any other formation in here. Okay, so first turn, she got blinded. Second turn, we want to put her on auto. So she'll heal the blindness. And she will actually use the heal potions in her inventory before using these spells. If you look at her inventory, we actually want these heal potions to be gone by the time we're done with this dungeon. And there's a lot of opportunities for her, for her to get blinded and for you to auto her to heal it. So normally you won't have to worry about it too much. But just note that you will have to have them gone at the end of the dungeon. So after that they'll hold her fight, we're going to switch to sword and manual and come up to these birds. From here, we're going to exit and life. Almost everything in this dungeon can be lifed and everything can be exited, except for the beholders. So these bird fights are just quick little two turns like that. 
Now, life is a weird spell in battle. I'm going to defend just so I can ex show it to you. Uh, so if I use life first, it'll be nice and easy. However, oh, you bastard. Um, let's heal that real quick. However, if we want to use life twice in one battle, if you see if I'm just holding A, life uh, defaults to a party member because it is a white spell. So what we have to do is find out a rhythm that you have. So I always count. Uh, so four, four A presses. And then I go A up A. That's just kind of how I do it. You'll get your own thing. But make sure you uh, target the enemy if you use it twice in one battle. It will carry over to the next battle, but it doesn't carry over in the same battle. It's so weird. Uh, this formation, you can either exit life the birds and then try to either bomb the beholder or you can claw the beholder on the first turn. I actually prefer to run away just like the um, the worms. It's actually a little faster to run away once or twice and get a good formation right off the bat. And I think we're on defense, so we're gonna go ahead and exit. Let's see how life stays over here through battles. Alright, so we are about to talk to Pazuzu for the first time. If you want, like, frames of time saved, use your claw. But don't jump over it, because that's another frame we just lost. But we'll talk to him. He'll run away to a random floor. This is the RNG that everybody hates. He can go to either floor 1, 2, 4, 5, or 6. 6 being the fastest for a speed run. You have a 1 in 5 chance, essentially. Uh, from here on out, when we get to be holder fights, we can bomb attack and auto with Kaylee. As soon as she gets that first attack off, we'll kill it with bombs, and then we will kill the second two, or the, the second turn with bombs. Even if they don't explode on us. Alright, we'll switch back manual sword. And we'll be exiting, exiting and lifing this formation as well. Again, it's very easy to mix up where your cursors are in between battles because we're switching back and forth between formations so much. So if you do need to kind of like recite it out loud, like, all right, so I'm on attack and Kaylee's on exit, that kind of, or whatever that is. It does help me when uh, we're switching all the time. We just missed two whites in a row. That's crazy. Again, healing if necessary. This is, the, if you remember from earlier, the enemy that cannot be lifed. So on Kaylee, switch to arrow. Everything in this dungeon can be single hit with arrow as well. I use life because it is a far faster animation. However, if you want 100% guarantee everything's gonna die, then use arrow. It's really up to you. I think the Almagus uh, guide does say you use arrow and exit. But again, this whole uh, dungeon hallway is filled with beholder fights. We can just auto-bomb our, our way through. They can either be two or three formations. So threes are obviously a little worse. We're, we're out of the heal potions, so I don't have to really think about those anymore. She will just use her spells. Switch back to manual sword. Make sure we're healed up. Over this way. 
And again, we're just gonna be exiting and lifing, or arrow if you prefer. That's my, my little uh, rhythm I do when I'm using life twice in the battle. Use a lot of audio cues for dings in the uh, battle menus. Alright, this is famously known as the Hellway. These fights are awful. Uh, you almost always want to be max health going in here. Because they can... I think they can petrify you. Yep, there you go. They do just a ton of damage to Benjamin. They can... There's just so many things that can happen. If something does happen, just try to finish the fight with whoever's alive. And then heal up afterwards. Keep an eye on your spells. You're using mostly white spells, so if anybody gets a little bit low, you might want to think about seeding soon. So yeah, we can only take like one certain kind of attack now. That might be it, actually. Just kidding. Unfortunately, that's just kind of how it happens. It's not worth your time to heal her, because then Benjamin's still going to die, and then she can still get petrified. So just take the death if it happens. And then hopefully this time it won't happen. Well, up. Oh. Gotta love Mystic Quest RNG. Gotta love it. If she does miss a spell, the life um, cursor does not go back to your party. Just a little tidbit. All right, we finally got through that fight. Even though we didn't do anything wrong, that's just kind of how fights go in this game. And our last one of the hallway. Mm. All right. I like to see it after this. Oops. I like to see it after this hallway. Um, you can still afford to do a few more fights, but I think if you get a floor six, then you're uh, set up until you have to fight Pazuzu. Uh, again, this is going to have two formations. It could be two Magicians and a Chimera, or just this formation you see here. Uh, no matter what you do, you're going to want to either exit the Chimera specifically, or arrow the Chimera specifically with Kaylee, because life does not affect him. We'll switch to Claw. Come over here. Claw and jump. And do that. Um, Alright. From here, we're going to... It's kind of up to you. I know some people that like to specifically life the Thanatos because you can use Doom Dance. I will just go through and uh, hold A and just use both spells on the Chimera and that means Benjamin will exit the... Thanatos or miss. Either way. It's up to you. Either way, gets the job done. Now, these formations are kind of like the worms from the tree. You can get this formation here, two and one. Or, you can get a different formation. Theoretically. In theory... Okay. I promise I'm not lying. Alright. So obviously this is going to be the better formation. You can kill it in one turn. Um, I have not done a lot of testing on this one specifically like I had with the worms. So, it's up to you on whether or not you want to try running away for the good formation. But exit life is nice and quick. 
Um, I still don't honestly don't know if it's a 50-50 for each formation. So do that. At, uh, do whatever you want there. There's three of those different formations that show up in this this floor. Here's another one of them. Like, hopefully you just get the magicians right off the bat. We'll, we'll run, see what happens in this tutorial here. A lot of the time when I do little bits of testing on this, it seems like it's not 50-50, which is my only hesitation with it. But it wouldn't make sense for the developers to have made this specific formation like a very special case. Mm. Alright, we got three good formations with the uh, Magician Mirror. Mm. Mm. Alright, another formation we can theoretically run from. Ah, we don't need to be perfect. I believe these, this one and the first one, after you use the claw to go over the gap, can also have a beholder with it. You would do the same exact thing and then either use um, a bomb with Benjamin and defend with Kaylee, or uh, attack with Kaylee and attack with a sword with Benjamin. Or use the claw with Benjamin and just use spells with Kaylee. It's really up to you. There's so many different things you can do. I believe that fight is always going to be two of the Lamias every time. This one can uh, be three magicians or two in a beholder. So just like I was saying with the last formation, you can attack and manually life this way if you wanted to. And hopefully you get a petrify on the beholder. And if not, just attack again. But otherwise, a single bomb from Benjamin will kill it in one hit. So if you do two spells on the first turn, you can just single bomb the second turn. We'll grab this spell here, the Flare spell. I realized I wasn't really talking through where to go, but I hopefully was going slow enough that you can keep up with me. Uh, come back to the right, bomb this door open. Switch over to your sword. The Flare spell is our new strongest spell. Any single formation of two, we can kill with Flare, just like in the uh, Mountain with Meteor. So if we get a two, we're gonna flare defend. And if we get a three that we can kill one with Kaylee, we will. So like this, we will flare and life. This one can also be two magicians and one beholder. So you cannot use flare or else you would get it reflected back at you and it would hurt. All right, it is the moment of truce. We find out if we get good floor six Pazuzu. Hey, hey, we do, of course. I don't get a single floor six in a run for the last month. And we get it in a tutorial where we're already two and a half hours in, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna speed the game up just a little bit because if you're doing this for the first time, you're gonna wanna know how to do all the other floors. So you come up here. You find out there's no Pazuzu, you go, oh, shit, like, this sucks. Make sure you had hit this with the axe. Either either way, floor six or not. You're going to come all the way back down here, and we're going to keep looking for him. Unfortunately, we have to do a lot of extra fights. That's why floor six is so much faster. He's just right there for us. Keep an eye on your wizard spells. If you're new, seat up. Uh, as much as you think you have to. If I uh, see anything out of the ordinary here that I haven't already gone over, I will slow the game down and explain it. But it's kind of just 
follow these paths, fight all the things you've already fought a dozen times. Um, here, try not to let your flare go off. Uh, once you get here, you'll find out if he's on floor five. That is our second best floor for him to be on. You're gonna come down here, go across this little bridge, I guess. Flare defend, a two, and flare life, a three. Same deal here. Jump over, do not go right here. We're gonna go up to this Thanatos. Same deal. Try not to let your flare go off. It's a little overkill and then pretty slow. So if you want to arrow just to guarantee you won't get flare, that's fine. Uh, here's floor four. You'll see right here if you have them. Floor four is technically the third best or third worst. I don't know, either one. Again, any two, we'll just flare defend. Make sure we have our meteors. Come down here, try this. Throw your dog's toy if he's begging you to do so. Uh, okay, so not only can the Chimeras not be killed with life, they cannot be killed with fire, which is what flare is. So if you flare this formation, you have to arrow the Chimera with Kaylee to leave the two uh, wizards. Perfect. We're going to come over here. Regardless of if he's on floor four or five, we have to do this. So don't go through that bomb, that bomb door. Come over here. We're gonna have to fight this guy. Same deal as the one before. Can't life him and we can't flare him, so we arrow him. Pull your axe out. Hit the switch. And if he's on floor four, we're gonna come back this way. We bomb this wall. And we just fight those two gargoyle formations. We talk to him. And on floor four, he will actually escape back up to floor five. So we'd still have to go to floor five. Go back up here. He would be here now if he was on floor four. Unfortunately, there's no fast way to get there. We have to go all the way back. So essentially, you're going to backtrack the exact same way you just came in if he's on floor five or on floor four. Jeez. All right, so you hit the switch, and he's not on floor four or floor five, but we still had to hit the switch. We come this way, we go down these stairs now. Bring out your claw, claw crossed, go down these stairs. This is floor two, the absolute worst floor. We'll keep our same thing going. We can finally see if he's on floor two. But even if he's not, we still have to do this part. Which I need to flare for. Again, these things can just be lifed. Here's the bad information I was talking about. Uh, we can not flare. So we can just go ahead and exit life. And then since uh, he only takes one bomb, what we can do, switch to bomb, or we get, we can switch to bomb, attack and defend, or we can leave it on sword and just attack and attack. Maybe she gets a crit, most likely not. And then we kind of just finish it off, or we just attack again. I don't know, it's one of those things where there's no really great way to do it. Again, we'll switch to axe. Come down this way. And now we have to uh, 
If he's on floor two, we have to go down this way. If he is not on floor two and he hasn't been on any of the other floors, any of the other floors that you have checked, what you need to do is just use exit as soon as you hit that switch. It'll take you straight back to the outside. You go right back in and you just go straight forward and you fight him from there. Again, everything is kind of... Oops, we go down this way. Everything's kind of just the same as it's always been in this dungeon. We finally get some Lamias with something else. Doesn't matter what you use life on. It'll the player will kill them. This is why nobody likes this part of the RNG. Just... Even it's sped up. You see how much extra time we have to spend just to get to the boss if he's on floor two. It's kind of crazy. Same thing here. Not really a good way to do it. We could, since we're both over half health, now we can do auto and attack. And unfortunately, she got blinded. Don't use our bombs on this little thing. Don't go to the left side. Uh, wait, this, 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 this. Uh, all right. Some of those flare defend if that ever happens. And lo and behold, you'd be at Pazuzu. Did I have a save state? I don't know if I did like to think that I did. I did. Perfect. Alright, so that's how you do it. Again, if he's on floor one, you're going to exit after that floor two switch. Just come straight up here. You can avoid these guys by walking behind the pillar. So all you have to do is fight one fight here. And then you fight Pazuzu. However, we got a floor six, of course. We're going to flare defend. And from here, we're going to want to full heal and seed up. Switch to the clock. We'll talk to him, and now here we go. Worst boss in the game. Pazuzu, Pazuzu has 25,000 HP. And after five turns, he'll do a little thing called Psych Shield, which we'll go over when we get there. So we're going to Flare and Arrow. Again, we're going to switch Kaylee to Auto as soon as anybody's under half health. With an ideal uh, fight here, we get four flares and an arrow off with Benjamin. There's a small chance for level 19, I think, that gives you, no, level 20 gives you plot five meteors or flares. I forgot to auto, I was just talking through it. Damn, my mistake. If you do like, and you are on the claw, you actually have to switch off of the claw and back to it, or else you will not get the damage boost, to believe it or not. This is turn two. Wait, no, this is turn three. Yes, yeah, turn two. This is turn three. Good so far. This is turn four. Careful with your mashing, or else that will happen. And again, on the fifth turn, he will drop his speed to zero, so we will both outspeed him. And then he will switch into a mode where he will reflect magic. So we're going to use, uh, since we used all four of our flares, we're going to move up to arrow, and we can still have Kaylee use cure or use arrow if you have enough health. So you'll see this little animation where he goes into Psych Shield. We're already on the second phase of his fight, which is that next little sprite where he looks a little tired. Uh, from here, like I said, we cannot use magic. So we're going to seed with Benjamin. If we are low health, we can auto Kaylee and she'll just heal. If not, we can manually heal if we really want to. Or we can just physically attack with the axe. 
Um, so after, on the second turn after the Psych Shield, he will go back to normal. However, he will most likely not outspeed Kaylee at this stage. Kaylee sometimes can be outsped, but most of the time not, so put her on auto if someone needs to be healed, otherwise just attack. And of course, in this instance, we could have used Arrow, but it's better to be safe than get 2,000 damage knocked back at you. Alright, we'll switch Kaylee back to uh, Arrow here. And now we've got, I think, three turns, and then he will drop his speed again, and then use Psych Shield. So the next one. Making sure to heal when necessary. Again, I could put her on auto and she would just heal Benjamin, but I kind of want Kaylee healthy as well. So uh, you'll get a feel for things and how you want to play him. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Luckily, he's in Psych Shield, so we couldn't have used magic anyways. Um, so here we'll do this, and again, we'll cure all. Again, this is one of those fights you really should practice. Holy cow. And again, there's stuff that can happen that you can't do anything about. Alright, keep flaring. We just flare and arrow as many times as we can. If Benjamin ever goes before Pazuzu, you know he's about to Psych Shield. Or it's every two turns. Would you lay off, man? Jeez. <laughs> he will not, is the answer. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so if you do run out of flares, it's not worth it to seed again. Because Arrow does almost as much damage. So just switch Benjamin to Arrow. And we're good. And there's the Zeus. Why didn't that go? Oh. Hm. Got a little cutscene here. Take a drink of water. So you're going to be tempted to grab that chest there because we've grabbed the chest after every boss so far. But we are actually just going to exit out after we get healed. Again, just hold start. And we'll go down to Windia again. Windia trip number three. First thing you need to do is go up to the inn and buy zero potions. Just like we did with the seeds earlier, you're gonna buy zero. Do not use them yet. If you use them now, there's there's a way to get out of it, but it's gonna take you a long time. Better just to, to not do it. So come talk to old sunglasses again. You should have exited after buying the zero potions. I just was talking and forgot. So once Ruben is in our party, then we will use our zero potions. Remember, hold start to get to our menu. Items, zero potions. And then immediately back out. The music will change. And then talk to old sunglasses again. And uh, let's see what we do here. We exit on out. Hold up. We're going to go to the Rainbow Road. And we have to move one step forward to get a cutscene where he just blows up the Rainbow Road. Okay, awesome. Now, we can't just go down. We actually have to move up and then down. So just kind of remember that. Back to Windia. Back to the Chocoba House. And instead of talking to old sunglasses, we're going to go all the way around and talk to Kaylee. She will give us the captain's hat. We will exit out. Right back in. A lot of exiting in this part. Go straight back to the back right. And then right to the stairs. And through the portal. And straight up until we go to the boat. We have to click A to get onto the boat. Make sure Ruben is off of auto. And we start our next line of fights with different formations. We're going to go up here. Don't worry about that Thanatos. So this can be either the two Chimeras, or it can be uh, two Mages and a Chimera like that. I'll just switch my notes here real quick. So for this formation, what you want to do is 
use exit. Oops. Again, we'll exit this guy because we cannot use life. We use life on the magician. And then we want Ruben to be set up on the correct menu. So we'll use uh, flare and white. So we'll switch Benjamin to flare and have him on white. That'll kill the magician and we'll be set up for the rest of the ship, essentially. If you do get the two Chimera, it is uh, arrow all with Benjamin and white with Ruben. So this can have two formations. The two Thanatos is really good. Or the two weak Dullahans, whatever you want to say. And you can also have uh, this formation, which is just awful. It's again one of those situations where we run away and try to get the two Thanatos. You can, you can kill him if you want. You face that same formation in uh, Pazuzu's tower. But it really is faster to run. You figure, <laughs> don't usually get three in a row. Certainly don't get four in a row. Certainly don't get five in a row. Yeah, see? And there you can just flare defend. Come on, find the mast of the ship here. Go up, right, up on the road. Left here, down, and fight the left Thanatos. Same exact thing, just hold A. Run away if it gets a bad formation. And again, it's a very straightforward route here. There's only one way you can go. Keep holding A, flare defend. So you're not going to go where you have to fight all those enemies. Straight down, and instead of Flare Defend, we're going to Flare Life. We could Flare White here. If you don't want to have a chance to miss a life, but this is the fastest way to do it. And essentially, we're done with the ship. We go down. Or up, I guess. Grab this chest. And talk to whoever this is. Captain Mac. We'll automatically be teleported out of the ship. And from here, you have to take a step down to activate the next cutscene. From here, do not use exit until you go through the portal. We're back at Windia again. We'll go straight up to the inn, and we will be greeted with another cutscene. Where we will, for the final time, get Phoebe. And again, if you are needing a file for the resistance glitch, this is the early, earliest point in which you can uh, save the game and use it for the resistance glitch. So, when you have her in your party, come over, talk to this guy to actually stay in the inn, make sure you're mashing A. We'll wake up well rested and come talk to this gray hair guy. We'll activate that little thing and from there, exit out. And again, right back to India. This time we're going to the back right to go back to the ship. Watch out for the old lady. Get it right to the stairs, through the portal. And from here, only on the second trip you can go down. It's technically like a couple steps faster and go up to the boat. Come over here. You uh, click A on the steering wheel, and it will drive over to the final dungeon of the game. We'll exit out here. And since there's no actual walking animation from here to here, really, it's so short, I would just mash the buttons to enter for the first time. So we're in Doom Castle. All right, there are two formations we can have on this fight. Three ninjas, which we're gonna take care of with a, what is it, flare. 
Oh yeah, yeah. So we'll take care of it with a flare and a single thunder. Uh, forgot to have the claw on. That's why it's important to have the claw. I want to show you that three again just to show how much, uh, how much better it is. Flare and thunder. Perfect. Uh, if you do get the two formation, all you have to do is queue up Flare on Benjamin and use White with Phoebe. The White will kill them. All right. So there's a couple different things you can do here. Um, you can step to the right and try to use the claw on the thing, on that little hook. If you do miss, uh, then you kind of just waste time. The way I do it is I just hold straight down. Again, remember, this is quicksand. If you hold the direction you're going, it'll go faster. So hold down, go to the right. Again, holding down. Once you get to the last tile of the wall, you want to hold left until you land here. We'll use one of our Mega Bonds. There and there. If you uh, route your items out properly, you'll actually end up with zero bombs here. And if you do that, then you um, can still use bombs and it will have the same effect. You just won't see the actual bomb. So we're going to come up here and we're going to have the claw equipped. We're going to use the flare spell and have Phoebe use life on, on Skolaris Rex. That'll automatically kill him. We'll have a Java update at some point. Flare those two guys, and that's the boss. Nice and easy. Make sure we're healed up. I might as well use the seed while I'm in the menu. Just follow the straightforward path. We'll open this door. That's the uh, pendant we would have gotten through Pazuzu's chest that we didn't need, obviously. All right, so through here, there's kind of two ways you can do this. Uh, for all the fights, you're going to... For most of the fights, you're going to want your claw out. You're going to flare, and you can either flare white almost every single fight, or you can flare auto. And she will take care of uh, every fight the way she needs to, except for one. Hit this uh, statue here. Remember, first we need to go left. Jump over this gap. Hit this statue. Don't forget to go in the store that you opened. And again, we can just flare auto. Ooh, that's unfortunate. All right, if that something like that happens, then what we can do is just hit another flare, but use white instead, and that'll just clear everybody up. Switch to your sword. Open up that door. Try not to switch back to claw every time because there's actually a bunch of statues you need to hit. In the so we'll hit this one. Then we switch to claw. Claw over to this. Jump over. Jump across here. Go ahead and hit that statue. Switch back to claw because we're now going to fight the squid. Again, we will go ahead and flare out. Ooh, uh, perfect. If you do get a strike first, you can flare in white. And on any fight, you get a strike first, and it'll be fine. really could optimize this fight a little bit if it's the crab fight. Uh, once you beat that crab, you're most likely going to be out of spells, as you see here. So we'll let's see. Keep your claw out for this. Let's see. I think it's three tiles short. Two tiles short. Go ahead and jump over there. Jump over that gap. Keep following the path. 
I would definitely practice this area. It's easy to get lost and forget to hit a couple statues. Right on there. As you come down, don't follow the path. I did that so many times. You jump over right here. First opportunity. And then you follow the path. All the way up here. Jump over. Yeah, one more fight before the boss. Alright, so this is a fight that she will not kill appropriately with auto. So we're actually going to use Blizzard on this Buddha guy. And then Flare will take care of the other two. But if she autos white on all three, that guy actually survives white. We'll keep our claw out. Go down next to this hook. Hook over here. And make sure you have your claw equipped for this fight. We are going to flare and defend. Hopefully nothing terrible happens with her. Okay, nice. So we flare this. Switch over to your sword. Exit this and defend again. And that's the second boss, as long as he hits. Beautiful. Again, excuse the jump in time. So after the stone golem, we're going to come down here, grapple to that hook, jump over this way, come here, grapple to that hook, grapple to that hook, and exit the way we came in. Go up the stairs once more. Two more floors, and then the final boss, and we're done. Uh, we're going to start off by going right here. Follow this path. Just jump over here. Left here fight these. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. For this area, there's a couple ways we can do it. We're always going to want to use Flare with Benjamin, and then we can either use Fire on a single dog, because dogs are generally the most dangerous, or we can White. I suggest the dog. If Phoebe goes first, you save yourself a lot of trouble. Both ways will kill, just that one's safer in my opinion. For this fight, you can either be two dogs or three dogs. If it's three, what you want to do is flare defend. If it is two dogs, you want to uh, queue up a flare, but have Phoebe use white, and she will kill the dogs by, by themselves. Or by her. Alright, uh, again, keep track of your spells if you can. I know we just ran out of our, our flares. We're going to grapple over this one. And jump it on across. All right, so we've got the Buddhas here. Um, let's see. I don't remember if, honestly, Flare will kill them. We'll find out. I'm pretty sure this will work. No, I don't know anything. All right, we will Flare White this then. I guess if you get a Buddha formation, you're gonna want to Flare White. That's quite unfortunate. If Benjamin does die and Phoebe stays alive, you can just double white these and it'll be fine. <clears throat> or, you know, you can just get your, your day ruined. Honestly, that's just kind of how this game goes sometimes. Alternatively, what we can do is defend Phoebe with Benjamin, which is something we don't normally do. Have Phoebe use fire on the dog, and then wipe the last two guys. Again, it all kind of, kind of comes down to luck. That strategy might be the most safe, but at the same time, if they use Petrify and Benjamin right away, then you're vulnerable. Uh, I'm going to come down left here and down. We're going to fight this uh, Cerberus formation. Again, we have two, so we can just use white, and Phoebe will kill them.
Do not go across here yet. That is for after the boss. We'll come up to the right here, jump over that. All right, no boot is here, so we're going to... Oh, we got a strike first. Uh, so if we didn't get strike first, we would fire the dog and then flare. But since we got strike first, we'll try to kill all three at the same time. So we'll just flare away. That's our last fight before the boss. So we'll heal up and seed up. Just come on up, jump across. Make sure you're healed. So this is the Twin Head Wyvern. It's got 15,000 HP. What we are going to do here is arrow, single, and white, apparently. Or no, son of a bitch. We're supposed to arrow all, arrow all, and white. do from here is just use white or uh, sorry arrow with Benjamin and we're gonna use white with Phoebe he is uh, pretty resistant to flare so we're not gonna be using that on this fight um, if one of your characters gets below half we're gonna put him on auto try to get a heal uh, if that happens then that's pretty unlucky if at any point during the run your partner dies and you're in a boss fight just start trying to run away you want to die as fast as possible, and using an actual attack is pretty slow. So, that's pretty unlucky. Again, we'll arrow and white. There we go. That's what you're looking for. You want to go before the, the other main enemies. But again, speed is just a suggestion. <clears throat> Switch on to auto. Perfect. Again, don't manually cure in case something like that happens. He would have attacked Phoebe there, we most likely would have had to start over again. Hey, look at that. Uh, there's relatively zero chance we beat this. Again, RNG is a bitch in this game. We could have theoretically played that ultra safe by defending Phoebe with Benjamin so she could get a heal off. But it's one of those things where you have to weigh weigh the pros and cons of each situation like if I'm if I'm going for a really good time I'm obviously going to try to play aggressively and I'm not going to do extra movements like that so dying just a part of this run unfortunately We are getting very unlucky. Twin End usually does not give this much trouble. Uh, accidentally just cured there. That's not good. Why did, I'm not even paying attention anymore. We're gonna start that over. All right, that never happened. We didn't die once. It's our first try. And I use flare. Genius. All right, that works for taking out the enemies. But do remember to switch to arrow because the twin head is resistant.
Again, the fight you're going to want to practice, just like with most of the boss fights in this game. Just so you can kind of see attack patterns, or that's not really a pattern, but so you can kind of get a feel for what attacks he does and what you should be preparing for, uh, when you should play safely, and all that kind of stuff. So again, Phoebe theoretically outspeeds him most of the time, so if it's going to be close. Or we can just kill him. That works too. All right, so that did, obviously did not go very well. But that's just kind of how it goes. So we're going to heal up. Grapple over to the left here. Head on down here. Remember that uh, Cerberus fight we did? We'll grapple across there, finally. That just leads us to the exit. Or the entrance that we came in. One last floor. Arguably the most difficult floor. We're going to come up here. We're going to go right. Then down here. We can cut through the side of the stairs, like we have in an old game. So cut through here. And attack the Cerberus. Again, we know that we can kill three with Flare. And we can defend with Vivi. Uh, well, that was a good fight. Nothing bad happened. We're going to come up, go to the right, go up. And do keep in mind that you can fall off a lot of these platforms, so try not to make any mistake. Miss try to not take any missteps. Uh, for this, we know that the chimeras resist flare, so we're actually going to meteor and white. Um, for most of this floor, two enemies cannot die to one attack from Benjamin. So we do actually have to um, white an entire set of three instead of firing the dog. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but we did, uh, the Chimeras did try to paralyze us, and that's the major benefit of getting the Venus Shield, which is the, the newer route. There are a lot of enemies on this floor and a couple bosses that can paralyze us, and if, you know, obviously we resist those, then that just saves us a lot of time. Uh, this is the one fight you can do, flare and fire on, fire the dog, and as long as you have your claw out, you'll kill the Thanatos with Flare. You might be able to do it with Sword, but it's it's pretty much just safer to keep your claw out from this floor. But every other fight, you're going to have to Flare or White, or Meteor White, depending on who you have in the, in the fight here. Yeah, look at that. We can Flare Defend. Again, most of these are just rehashes of formations we've seen before. So if it's something we've gone over before, I'll try to remind you, but should be able to kind of figure that out. When somebody gets low, heal up. Do not exit. This is why I specifically use Phoebe's. I've maybe accidentally exited out of this dungeon once on a very good pace. Um, again, we have this formation. We can Meteor White if we had Meteors. Again, keeping track of your spells is a very good idea. Try that again. If you do happen to do this in a run, where you get into a battle that you cannot finish with the normal strats, you can go through, use exit, uh, use fire. We can do it the slow way. I was just trying to exit to show you the way you're supposed to do it to remind you, uh, which is supposed to be a meteor and white. We'll just do that. Obviously, that's not fast and optimal, so you're going to try to not go into battles with no spells. Alright, so I know this has a Thanatos in it, but we still do need to Meteor White because it does have Chimera in it. I think he might actually survive that. Sure will. 
That's unfortunate. Uh, at that point, you can either white or just kind of attack. Attacking's faster, you can technically miss. Uh, so after you make it all the way through this little glass tunnel, coming down here, fight this Chimera uh, formation. Again with Meteor and... White. Any formation with a Chimera in this, uh, this floor, you have to use Meteor. There is another more difficult strategy that you can do for every battle in this dungeon, which I will show you. Uh, as you come down here, do not fight this Thanatos. You can just kind of go right here and skip him. Head up here. And again, don't fight this guy. Skip him. And uh, the more difficult strategy I was talking about is the Calm Lamity strategy. And if I recall correctly, what he does is actually defends... Phoebe with Benjamin on the first turn. He will solo or single out a dog if there's a dog or single out a different enemy if it's an easy to kill. So we'll do this. Hopefully she goes first. That's kind of the whole premise of this strategy. Perfect. And then we will defend again and use white with Phoebe. And I believe white will kill every two enemies in this uh, floor. And the premise behind this is, uh, I think he said that you're going to have to heal almost after every single battle, no matter what. So you might as well get guarantees. Because if Benjamin is defending, then you're essentially guaranteed. Uh, so we can do the same thing here. We can defend and fire. Alternatively, we'd be flaring and whiting. It's up to you. Calm claims that this is faster. He did a lot of uh, research and timing on it. I have yet to do that. So that's kind of how you go through this whole floor if you do it that way. But anyways, once we get here, we are through all of the random enemies and ready to fight Zoo, the Pazuzu clone. However, he's got 20,000 HP instead of 25,000. What we're going to do is start off with an arrow on this guy, the Chimera, and then a single thunder on the Thanatos. Hopefully you go before everybody. If not, yeah, hopefully you get lucky. And again, same strategy with the last few bosses. You're just going to flare. Oops. We're going to flare, and we are going to white. And you're going to switch Phoebe to auto whenever you need to heal. Now, the main difference between Zoo and Pazuzu is that Zoo will use Psych Shield after four turns. So kind of keep that in mind as we're going through here. That's obviously ideal. It's just the attack that does one no matter what. So we heal up when we're low. Keep using flare and white. He will drop his speed to zero here. And same strategy with Pazuzu. If uh, nobody's under half, leave Phoebe on manual. So that way she doesn't try to use the spell. We'll use Seed here to get uh, our Flare spells back up. We'll attack. We'll use the Seed, make sure not to overmatch. Uh, at this point, he will return to normal speed. And you can take your risk and have Phoebe attack. Uh, on Pazuzu, we would make Phoebe still use a man uh, manually attack. Uh, but Zoo has a pretty good chance of being faster than us. So that was a good example right there. There, there are a few circumstances where Phoebe will attack first, and then you'll get your magic reflected at you. If you want to play ultra safe, then just physically attack. Uh, otherwise, just finish the fight. It goes down much faster. You do a lot more damage. Uh, key here, do not heal. You get a free heal coming up here. Go back the way we came. All the way to the Chimera. Yeah, the Chimeras that we skipped. No, these are the dogs. We skip these, make sure to skip them again on the stairs, and just go straight down. We'll fall off this ledge. Make sure you have the claw out. Just claw over here and go out the front door. And it is time for the final fight in the game. Just head all the way to the top here. Go straight up and we'll get a little cutscene where we will be healed.
Now, it is very important that you either set yourself to claw, or sorry, axe or bombs. If you use claw, then the damage underflow that we're going to be doing is not going to work because you do extra damage due to the buff. And you don't want to use sword because you do not want to go faster than, than Phoebe. So remember, axe or bomb, very important. So the order in which we're going to attack here is we're going to queue up a cure on the boss with Benjamin, and we are going to defend with Phoebe. This is turn one. Holy cow. Hopefully that doesn't happen. All right, we're going to queue up another cure with Benjamin, and instead of defending on turn two, we will cure with Phoebe. The premise of not using sword is we, we need Phoebe to go first here. He'll do a little transformation. We'll do that, and then we'll go back to the turn one, and we'll cure defend. And as soon as the pure damage shows up, right there, that's tied. Make sure you determine that it's not a miss, because I people have definitely missed those last cures, and you don't want to split too early. Uh, all right, so that is Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. I know it was kind of choppy. I took a couple breaks, or I had to take a couple breaks. I'm trying. I'm going to try to splice the videos together as well as I can. Um, hopefully, things weren't too confusing. If you do have any questions, again. There will be a link to my Twitch in the description if you want to come ask or come watch a run. Uh, this is the most updated route that I know of, that I've been informed of. Again, thanks to El Magus for kind of starting the whole routing. Not of this Venus Shield route, but the original route. Uh, I'll link... I will put a link in the description to his Game Facts uh, thingy. And, uh, yeah, thanks to him, thanks to Claude for this route in particular and for optimizing it. And thank you to Calm, Lam Calm Lamity, who is currently number three on the leaderboards, who has been working with me a lot, doing a lot of research, doing a lot of numbers, um, trying to figure out the fastest way we can do everything in this game. We'd love to have more runners. Uh, if you have any questions, again, please come ask. Other than that, I uh, hope everybody has a great day and enjoy running this game.